Brethren, be strong in the Most High, and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of Yah, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of the Most High, that ye may be able to stand and withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the Most High Yah. to the Center Park family, the Most High Yah. We want to welcome all of our listeners to another Sword of the Spirit Biblical Teaching. We want to welcome all of our new subscribers and thank you for continuing to support us as we do the work of the harvest. Going to go ahead and bring in my sister, co-teacher in the face, Shabbat Shalom. How are you? Shabbat Shalom. I'm doing well on this Set Apart Day. How are you, sis? I'm doing great. Cannot complain. Just happy to once again be here. Very excited for today's teaching. Once again, Yah is doing his thing. Um, you guys, those of you who are watching this teaching, this is one of those teachings <laughs> that if you had to go to the bathroom, I hope you already went. <laughs> you are not going to be able to sneeze <laughs> and without missing something. It's one of those teachings. So if you're watching, make sure that you have a notepad, paper, pencil, highlighter, all of those things so that you will be able to really take notes, take some really good notes for today's teaching. It is going to bring so much understanding to uh, what's been happening to our nation of people as a whole. And I'm just excited and just uh, give all praises be to Yah for, you know, just him just even blessing me with the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to bring it forth today the way that he envisioned 
everything you see before you from the imagery, from the scriptures is how he has envisioned. As I hear, that's what I write and I type it. So um, besides that, I'm just, just glad to be here again on another Sabbath. Glad to be here in his presence. Um, did you have a good week? I did. I did. I had a good week. Um, everything is winding down. So praise be to Yah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so I, I can't complain. Um, just, just thanking him just for just all he has done right. prior to and up to now. So praise be to Yah. Praise and um, I can't wait to, to get into this teaching. <laughs> uh, yes, we are. For those of you who are watching, if you would like to ever join us for a live teaching on the Sabbath and you don't have anyone to fellowship, we do uh, for the most part. Um, most uh, Sabbaths, uh, we uh, have live teachings via Zoom platform. So if you would like to join us, send us an email. You see the uh, email service of Yah at yahoo.com that's on the screen. And um, we welcome all who want to continue to learn and grow in our Father. Yeah, so having said that, I am going to get started with today's teaching. So today's teaching, um, the Father Yah had me, you know, I, I see as time continues to go on, he is continuing to bring me to the next level in my studying and uh, something that I wanted to mention also that I didn't in the beginning, for those of you who um, are interested, we are going to be launching, it's going to be a five-week course. Um, I have not given it the title. I believe it's going to be entitled Walking in the Ways of Yah. Um, this was something that Yah gave to me many years ago. It was a book <laughs> that I haven't written but um, I would like to, it was put on my heart because of the emails and inboxes that I have been getting um, for us to do some type of study group. I've been getting, having people reach out to me about that. They would like to have some type of study group. They want to learn and, and walk in the ways of, of Yah. And so for those of you who have reached out and those of you who we put a video out on, on YouTube, that was our last video, I think it was earlier in this week. You know, if you're interested, send us an email to servantsofyah at yahoo.com or you can comment below this video. Message us and let us know that you're interested. This class is gonna be free of charge um, and uh, showing believers how to walk in the ways of Yah, also teaching you how to defend the faith because we're at a time where it's not just enough to know what you believe, but you gotta be able to defend it. You have to be able to uh, know how to stand and then also teaching you how to study. So I'm gonna be sharing a lot of my tips and a lot of things that I do to study, um, to show myself approved unto Yah, to show you how um, we're expected to study and how to line up precepts. A lot of our people struggle with that um, let alone might not even know what a precept is. So teaching you how to align the word so that if your understanding is off, you don't reject the word because you think, oh, well, many people say, well, Paul, oh, well, Paul said this, and this is, you know, contrary to Torah. Paul wasn't teaching against Torah. The scriptures tell you that his teachings are hard to understand and those who are unlearned twisted to their own destruction. Paul was accused of teaching against the Torah or the law in his day, and it's the same thing that's going on today. And that's because people have no understanding of the foundational things of Yah. They don't know how to line up scripture. They don't know how to study. And so they throw the whole word. They throw the baby out with the, the bath water because they don't know how to study. And so this is not just a course for those who are new in the faith, but even those who are who have been in the faith for a while, been in the truth, but they want to take their studying and, and, and their understanding to the next level because there's levels to this. It, it, it doesn't stop. I'm continuing to grow. And you're going to see that even today with what I'm bringing forth um, and even applying a lot of what we do in education to this. And so having said that, if you're interested, send us an email to servants of Yah, service with the S at yahoo.com. And you'll see the email address again at the end of today's teaching. So, Let's get started. Today, 
Um, the Father Yah has, um, you know, has uh, been impressing upon me because I, I know that the things that are written in the Hebrew have uh, uh, greater meaning, stronger force. Uh, it's a, a language of action. Um, and I know a lot of uh, our people, they're coming back to the truth, but we can't, we have to throw away the Greco Roman understanding of his word because we, because when we apply the Greco Roman understanding, we're not going to get the true understanding because things in the Hebrew has a different force, it has a different meaning and understanding. And so today I'm going to be studying from the ancient Hebrew paleo, restoring the original Hebrew language back. Um, this is a language that restores the Hebrew letters, their words, and their roots, and define them within their ancient cultural context. So we're going to be studying um, the meanings of words and, and letters in their context to bring greater understanding, a deeper understanding of what today's title of the uh, teaching, which is the strength of the yoke. This title, Yah gave me this title, um, and I didn't even really have an understanding until he led me into the teaching as far as what this entails. And so that's what we're going to be doing. Um, Paleo Hebrew is um not a language it's a written language so we don't speak it so to speak we don't speak paleo hebrew it is a written language of communication and um they are comprised of pitch pit, pictographs okay and these pictographs um oftentimes have parent root words when they're when the specific two or three letters are joined together they form a new meaning just like um, and, um, you know, we're literacy uh, specialists and consultants and teachers. We know that when we have two or three letters when joined together, it makes one sound like for uh, T-C-H makes C-H together makes ch, okay? But C by itself is H by itself is but when you put C-H together, it's so it forms a whole new different sound. And so that's what we're going to be doing today to kind of bring an understanding to this. So, so again, parent root words, they are normally comprised of two, two letters or two pictographs that are joined together that make one form meaning, so to speak, just like I explained to you with the letters. Um, I'm going to show you an example of a parent root word when two or more Hebrew letters join together, make a whole new, make a meaning. And sometimes it can have multiple meanings like CH is CH, but so is TCH, TCH as in match, like he is a perfect match, M-A-T-C-H, or if we want to say C-H as in each, E-A-C-H, like we each have four pieces of candy. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So let me give you an example of a parent root word. So what we have here, this is a, a two, two, two Hebrew letters, but they're in their pictogram, pictogram, and this is basically a picture of writing, okay? In their pictograph form, this is the bait, and this is the nun, okay? And so the bait represents a house. And when the bait, the Hebrew letter bait, is combined with the nun, when nun means a seed which continues to the next generation, it means the house continues or the son of. So in the scripture, you'll see Abraham, Isaac was the son of Abraham or Jacob, you know, Jacob was the son Isaac. Isaac was a son of Abraham. So bait again means house. None is a seed which continues to the next generation. And so when you have the Hebrew letter bait and none com combined together, it means the house continues. Whereas when you have a son, so if a father has a son, then now the house, you know, that's why he, you know, the son carries the children carries that father's last name, the house continues. And then when, if it's a female, 
when she gets married, okay, she now carries her husband's name. And when they have children, now there's another house. You understand what I'm saying? So when we have that with the tribes, it goes on as well with the different uh, houses and the tribes. So what is the strength of the yoke? Okay, what is the strength of the yoke? Um, in order for us to be able to answer that question, what is the strength of the yoke? Because that is the, the title of today's teaching. We have to first identify the yoke, okay? And so on the screen, we see um, two Hebrew paleo letters, pictographs. We see the um, Allah, and then we see the Lamed, okay? In your upper right-hand corner of the screen, you see it in the modern Hebrew. That's the modern Hebrew writing for the um, Allah and the Lamed. Okay, or Lamed. Now, the Allah, and it's spelled two different ways, is a picture of an ox, and it represents strength. Then the Lamed, or the Lamed, is a picture of a shepherd's staff, and this represents authority. It also represents or means to teach and also to provide. When you're teaching, you're pro providing or imparting knowledge and or understanding. Okay, so the Aleph or the A, the ox, the Aleph in, in, in combination with the Lamed, the shepherd staff means the all. all. It means a strong authority. And a strong authority, normally they had, uh, like when Moses had like the wooden staff, most likely of oak because this was the strongest staff. When you think about all, think about the strong authority, all as in Allahim, not Elohim with E-L, but all, Allahim, Allahim, the strong authority. So we're going to watch a quick video because I told you with the, in the uh, Paleo Hebrew, there are parent root words, parent root words. So the word Lamet, which is a shepherd's staff, has a spelling in itself. And you often find this times in, in the Hebrew that they may have a letter, but that letter or the, the name of that letter has an actual spelling. The word Lamed, the name of the letter, is spelled Lamed Mem Dalet. This is the three-letter root. In Hebrew, we'd say the Shorish. Lamed Mem Dalet, the same spelling but pronounced Lamad, means to learn, to train for, to be trained, implying training that would be put to use. And Lamed Mem Dalet, also pronounced Lamad, means to teach, to instruct, to impart knowledge. And the same spelling, Lamed Mem Dalet, but pronounced Limud, means a disciple, one who is taught, a follower. I'm sure you've caught the idea that's on view here. Okay. So, um, again, the parent root word, um, well, we, we're going to go into that root word. I haven't given you the root word of what uh, the um, the Aleph and the uh, Lamet actually means we're going to go. But again, let's quickly recap. The Aleph represents strength. The Lamet is a picture of a shepherd's staff. And let me say this because I forgot to say this. In the Hebrew, for those who are watching this for the first time, we don't read from left to right like we do. Okay. In the Hebrew, they read um, they read from right to left not left to right. So when you see me have it written down the olive first, make sure that you're looking at the picture that is on the right, okay? They write from right to left. So I just wanted to just make sure you had that understanding, okay? So the olive um, is a picture of an ox. It represents strength. The um, lamet um, represents authority. That's the picture of the shepherd's staff. It also means to teach and to impart knowledge or understanding. That's what you're doing when you're teaching, just like what I'm doing right now. The Aleph, again, as we just learned, in combination with the Lamet, means all oh, the strong authority. So I want you to just write that down the strong authority. Okay? So the parent root word for this pictograph, the all, the, which is the, um, the olive and the lamet, which is all, the strong authority, is yoke, okay? If you have a phone, I would even screen, if you could screen, if you're watching this from a laptop, screenshot some of this stuff 
so you can have this to go back or even take pictures of this for your understanding. But so the Aleph and the Lamet together is all, A-L as in Allahim, it is the strong authority, okay? Now, the uh, these two pictographs can mean anyone or anything of strong authority. Now, if we're serving Yah, we, we should be expecting that he is our strong authority, but that's not always the case um, with everyone. And it, it also can mean the ox in the yoke, okay? It can also mean the ox in the yoke because we're reading from right to left, the ox in the yoke. So these two pictographs, the Allah and the Lamet means yoke. Okay, again, we're going into and restoring letters and, and words and roots, and then we're defining them in their ancient cultural context. So that's what we're doing today. You're going to be stepping outside of yourself today to learn something new. So yoke, okay, according to the ancient Hebrew lexicon Bible, is considered as the staff on the shoulders of an ox that harnesses their powers for pulling loads, such as wagons, carts, or plows, okay? So it's considered to be the staff. That's what the yoke is. It's considered to be the staff. We know that the staff is used. The shepherd uses the staff to control the sheep, okay? To limit them as a boundary, to keep them in line. Um, Wikipedia, defines a yoke as a wooden beam normally used between a pair of oxen or other animals to enable them to pull together on a load when working in pairs as oxen usually do. So um, if you were looking at this here and wondering, okay, yoke versus yoke. Now, the egg yolk, and I think I talked about this in a video that I recently did. When we talk about the yolk or the strength of the yolk, we're not talking about um, Y-O-L-K as in the egg yolk. Now, something interesting, though, that I wanted to bring forth, the yellow part of the egg that is surrounded and attached to the white is the part, the yellow is the part of the egg that and that's the yolk that's the, the part of the egg that provides the protein and the fat that the embryo needs to be nourished okay and when we're talking about yolk here but that's not the, the yolk that we're talking about here this is the yolk that i'm talking about okay um typically a farmer he had two oxen just kind of like when we looked at the video in the beginning um two oxen are they're often yoked together and normally when two oxen are yoked together, they normally will have the more experienced ox um, would be teamed up with the less experienced or the younger ox, okay? The more experienced and older ox would be teamed up or yoked with the younger and the less experienced ox, okay? And when they have two oxen, when a shepherd or a farmer have uh, two oxen joined or yoked together. Um, this is done and uh, to make sure that the older ox is the one that is the stronger authority. The ox that is more experienced and older is the strong authority, okay? And we talked about the yoke and how with uh, the staff or the lamet, as we saw in the video, is there to teach, to disciple, um, to impart of uh, understanding and knowledge. So keep that in mind as we go forward as far as <clears throat> into this lesson with the two oxen that are yoked together. And this is um, the wooden piece of uh, material, so to speak, that's on the shoulders. Okay, remember that the lamet is considered or understood as to be the staff that is on the shoulders of, um, of, of the oxen. And again, the 
older ox, the older and more experienced ox would be teamed up and yoked up with the younger, less experienced ox. And the older ox, once again, is considered and should be the um, stronger authority, okay? So a yoke is a bondage, okay? It is a chain. It is something that links or joins uh, two together. It bonds together. It is also, a yoke is also considered to be a burden. And then look what I have there <clears throat> in, in caps and bold, slavery. So a yoke is also considered as, as well as it being bondage or it being joined or linked together, it is a, a yoke can also be, it's also considered to be a burden and also to consider to be slavery, okay? All right, so let's quickly recap once again, and you're gonna see me, we're gonna be recapping as I go along because we're gonna be adding this information together and you'll see why at the end. So again, the parent root word, yoke, is a pictograph of uh, an ox and um, a staff, which is an olive and a lamet, which means a strong authority. It can also mean the ox and the yoke. Okay, remember, <clears throat> we just learned that the lamet, which is uh, as a picture of a shepherd's staff, represents the authority of the shepherd. The lamet represents the authority of the shepherd. It's all, it also means to teach or to disciple, to impart some type of knowledge, okay? Again, it is likened, the yoke uh, is likened to be the staff that is on the shoulders of the ox that will harness their power for pulling loads such as wagons, cart, or plow. And I wanna show you a precept, okay? And Isaiah 9 and 4, that will confirm what I have just shared with you. Yah told um, um, the prophet Isaiah that he, for the children, he says, I will break the yoke, okay? I will break the yoke that burdens them. He's talking about the children of Israel. I will break the yoke that burdens them, the bar that is across their shoulders, okay? Think about that. Yah said that I will break the yoke that burdens them. He's talking about his people, the children of Israel, the bar that is across their shoulders and the stick that is being used by their oppressors. This, this is, um, that's a, a powerful statement and, and make sure that you're writing that down because there is hope for uh, our people. Wikipedia for shoulders. I have shoulders and harness um, highlighted and, and read and underlined for a reason. We're going to just quickly go over that. Shoulder. Shoulder. A shoulder is, uh, it means to be responsible for. Okay. Shoulder means to bear. You're bearing the burdens of someone else. Okay. To carry. To, to the shoulder means to accept responsibility for. Okay. The harness, as I stated before, means to control, to bind, to fasten, to govern, to limit, and it says yoke. So a harness is a yoke. Remember the yoke is, it represents the staff that's on the shoulders that will harness, that will control those two oxen that are yoked together they're going to be, when they have that wooden yoke on their shoulders, they're limited, okay? They're, they're going to be controlled. There's, there's boundaries as far as they're going, okay? Um, the shoulders, once that, that uh, yoke, wooden yoke is put on their, the shoulders of their oxen, of those oxen, this means to be responsible for it. You're going to carry the burden, the weight, you're, you're bearing and accepting the responsibility, especially if you are that older, more experienced ox. You are bearing and carrying and accepting responsibility for that younger and that inexperienced ox that is yoked or joined or fastened to you, okay?
And I'm going to try to go slow with everyone today so that you can, this is not a long teaching, but I, it's very impactful. And I want to make sure I don't lose anybody today. Okay. So let's, let's go back. We're going to study um, yoke um, in context. Let's, let's study yoke in, concept, in context. There are some precepts that we have to go over because yoking is discipling and I'm cutting my ear on teaching. It also means um, bearing the burdens of others, okay? Yoking is discipling. We learned this already, okay? Teaching, bearing the burdens of others. So let's study this in context. Galatians 6 and 2 says, brothers, if any man among you goes before you in error, you who are in the spirit, restore him by the spirit of gentleness and beware. He says, destroy, restore him by the spirit of gentleness, but beware, the way it's reading, it read funny, but beware unless temptation also comes upon you. You carry the excess load of one another and thus fulfilling the law of our Messiah. So we, if we have a brother or a sister and we know that they are in error, okay, that they're in error, that they are sinning, those of us who are the older, more experienced oxen, or if you just know, maybe you're not the older, but you just know that a brother or sister is in sin, it is your responsibility to bury, to bear, and, or to carry that, that load, okay? We are responsible for one another. And the scripture tells us that those of you who are in the spirit, restore that brother or that sister by the spirit of gentleness. You come to them in love with using the word. He says, but beware that you're not tempted, that temptation doesn't come upon you. And it says that you carry the SS load of one another, thus fulfilling the law of our Messiah. So how many of you knew that you are fulfilling the law of our Messiah, Yeshua? When you are correcting your brother or sister who are in error or who are in sin, okay? Romans 15 and one says, now we who are strong, have an obligation to bear the weaknesses of those without strength and not to just please ourselves. Each one of us is to please his neighbor for his good to build him up. So again, there, here's another scripture. I'm showing you yoke these precepts in context of being of discipling and teaching and bearing the burdens of others, just like Aaron and her had to do that with um i don't know what happened how this person got kicked out but just as um aaron and her had to do that with moses okay when moses uh was was weak and then hold on let me make sure this person's phone is muted because i i don't know what happened okay sorry about that so um, so we want to make sure that when, just like when Moses and Aaron, when Moses, when they were going to war and when Moses held his hands up, as long as his hands up, Israel won the war. But anytime his arms got tired and he put them down, they were losing the battle. So that's when Aaron and her, they, they held his hands up. Okay. When he began, when he was weak and he got tired. This is what we're called to do. It's part of I'm you not faith, not just being concerned about yourself and, and concerned about you and, um, receiving knowledge and growing, but also being willing to build up and to bear the responsibility of others in the faith who may be younger or more experienced than you are. We have an obligation because you're looking at it right here on the screen. By us doing this, we are fulfilling the law of the Messiah. Okay, I've heard people say, well, I'm just concerned about me as long as me and I. That's not the attitude that a true servant of Yah takes. You're not fulfilling the law of the Messiah if you're just 
concerned about yourself because you're supposed to um, care, be more concerned about the welfare of others before yourself. Yeshua did that when he went to the tree and died for us. He wasn't concerned about, oh, well, why should I have to do it? I didn't sin. Why do I? He went and said the joy that was set before him is why he remained on the tree. He could have got down if he wanted to, but he knew what the greater outcome was going to be. And that's us here standing here today that is groaning him, that is coming into the faith. Romans 15 and one says, now we who are strong have an obligation to bear the weaknesses of those without strength, not just to please ourselves. Each of, each of us is to please his neighbor for his good to build him up. Okay, so this is what happens every time I have a new person come in. So if anyone else goes out, just don't come back in because it kind of messed the teaching up. Okay, so another version says, we who are strong in the faith ought to help the weak to carry their burdens. We should not please ourselves. So this was another version says, the we who are strong in the faith, we, we shouldn't just be concerned about ourselves. We ought to help the weak carrying their burdens, not just pleasing ourselves. More, we're gonna, we're going through more um, precepts and context to show you what yoke mean in, um, in the ancient, um, in this ancient cultural context. First Thessalonians 5 and 14 says, and we beseech you, my brothers, that you correct those that offend and encourage those who lack courage and bear the burdens of the weak and be patient towards all men. So, okay, we are supposed to correct those that offend, okay? Yes, and but we also encourage those who lack courage, bearing up the burdens of the weak and making sure that we have patience towards all men because some of us, as soon as we come to truth, we just want to just you know, uh, throw everybody out. We have to be patient with people just as Yah was patient with us. But yes, there is an expiration with their patience and the grace <laughs> because there's, there's um, uh, expiration for grace that Yah, his grace is getting ready to run out right now. His window is closing for those who are still being stiff-necked and um, not wanting um, to yield themselves to acts of repentance, okay? But we are supposed to bear the burdens of the weak and be patient with those who are coming into the faith. That doesn't mean I got to be patient with somebody who's still talking about, well, I believe, I'm, I'm like they're getting ready to have Pride Day and, and with the Rainbow Coalition and all of this. I don't have to, I'm not being patient with that. I'm talking, he's talking about those who have made the decision to make their have their bodies be a living sacrifice okay we talked about the bronze and altar we talked about you know once you have confessed your sins and you have laid your sins there you have been forgiven of those sins and then you go for cleansing okay now you're ready for the work of the service okay i'm gonna be patient during that time but I'm not getting ready to be patient with somebody still want to be at a, a, a pride parade and you don't have, no, I don't have to be patient with that. That's not what this scripture is talking about. Philippians 2 and 4, or 3 and 4 rather. Do not out of selfish ambition or empty pride, but in humility consider others more important than yourselves. So you are to be humble in this walk and you are to consider others more, hum more important than yourself. Let no one be mindful only of his own things, but let each one also be mindful of the things of his neighbor. Let's consider Paul's statement in 1 Corinthians 10 and 3. He said, I don't seek my own belief. He says, but I do what benefits many so that they may be saved. That's what the reason why we are doing what we're doing now. This is not about my benefit and what I feel like I should be doing. I could be relaxing on the seven. I could be doing my own setting. Y'all has me doing what I'm doing right now so that those who are listening, maybe they that are not in salvation, maybe through the teachings that he's given to me to get put out here, that someone can be saved. So it's not about me being in my own benefit and what I choose to do, but I'm doing the things that I'm doing in the hours that I spend sitting at this table, staying up all night, not going to sleep. 
I do all of this so that for those who are not saved, maybe they might be saved. Again, just like when I said in the teaching that we were created with a purpose, everything has to do what it's supposed to do at its appointed time, all of the seasons. Spring has to do what it does in spring or summer can't come. Summer can't, uh, has to do what it's supposed to do in summer or fall doesn't come. If fall doesn't do what it's supposed to do, then winter can't come. The, the, the fall can't come out. I don't want to let go of the leaves. I, I don't want to shed the leaves. We, we can't do that. Everything has to, everything obeys. Everything that y'all created, like I said, obeys y'all except for man. Everything does what it is supposed to do. The moon shines when it's supposed to shine. The sun rises and sets at the appointed time when there is no competition between the sun and the moon. They, they work congruently. They work together. Okay, when the sun sets, then the moon time to do what he was created, what it was created to do. You understand what I'm saying? And when if one doesn't do what it was created to do, then the next thing can't do what it was supposed to do. So we have to make sure that we're doing what he has purposed and created for us to do, because maybe by us not doing what we're supposed to do, you might be stopping someone else in the faith from learning and growing. First Corinthians 12. But now, indeed, many are the members, but it is one body, and the eye is not able to say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need in you. Okay, but rather much, the members of the body seeming to be weaker are necessary. Are you looking at this? Those who seem like they're weaker, here he is saying that they are very necessary. And those are the body we think to be less honorable. He says to these, we put more abundant honor around. He says, but our value parts have no need for attention. But y'all temper the body together, giving more abundant honor to the members having need that there not be division in the body that the members might have the same care for one another so let's talk about um well if we're trying to de determine what the strength of the yoke is let's talk about the principles we have to establish yoke principles. A principle is a law. It is a standard. It is the foundation. It is a fundamental doctrine. Okay, it is a prescription. It is true. Think about a prescription. A prescription is a statute. Okay, the, the, the doctor can give you medication and tell you to take, um, take, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a, a name of a, med a medication, um, NyQuil, I'm just thinking of anything. Um, don't take NyQuil, but I'm just telling you. But if he, he, if he prescribes uh, maybe a prescription form of NyQuil, something that's not sold over the counter, okay, I couldn't think of anything. Then the statue comes, so that's the law. Take NyQuil, that's the law, that's the command. Okay, but the statue comes in and tells you how to keep the law. So how do I take this NyQuil? If he says take it twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening, or he may say take this NyQuil three times a day. Now that's the prescription. That's what a statue is. A statue teaches you how to keep the law. It, it's, it has a, a time element. It may have a place element in it. It, 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 it gives you the who, what, where, when, and how. Okay, it gives you more detail and specific information on how to keep a spe specific law of Yah. Okay, so a principle is a law, a standard, a foundation, a fundamental doctrine, um, a prescription, true. It is a rule, and it says that it is a precept. A principle is a precept. Think about that. Okay, a precept is a rule of behavior, a guideline, a commandment, or a regulation that is intended 
to influence the way that you uh think and behave okay so it it is a commandment when you when he gives you rules for how you to behave guidelines on how we're to act okay specific things he wants us to do charges we are being regulated okay man this world does not want to be regulated okay um y'all presented israel he presented them with a yoke okay y'all presented israel with a yoke when the children of israel when they were um when they were brought out of egypt okay egypt we know that is also synonymous with the house of bondage or the house of slavery okay remember we talked about yoke earlier we learned that yoke hopefully you're taking notes also means uh bondage but it also means slavery okay uh when 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 the children of israel when y'all brought the children of israel out of egypt again which is synonymous with the house of bondage or the house of slavery he presented them with a yoke and this yoke that he presented them with would be a yoke that would nourish and provide them with the fuel and everything that they needed to sustain the journey that he would be taking on again um this yoke would provide them with everything that they needed to be nurtured everything that they needed to endure the requirements of the task that yah had set be um before them yah was removing the children of israel from up under the yoke of pharaoh okay to give them a yoke that was not burdens okay let me say this again yah presented israel with a yoke and we're going to go into that scripture he presented israel with a yoke and the yoke that yah was presenting to the children of israel okay would be one that would nourish and sustain helping them to endure um, the requirements that he set before him. He was himself by bringing them out of the house of bondage or slavery, by bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt, Yah was removing them from up under the yoke of Pharaoh to give them a yoke that wasn't burdensome. Remember the children of Israel, when they were in um, Egypt, they were complaining. They were moaning and groaning. Go back and read exodus chapter one okay they were being vexed um pharaoh he was threatened because he said well these see this was a new pharaoh who had not known joseph and the ways that joseph what how he had saved egypt from the famine this new pharaoh says in exodus one did not know <laughs> joseph and his ways the children of israel were, were being treated well when joseph was alive so this new uh uh pharaoh that came along was threatened okay he was threatened by them he says wait a minute these people are they having babies every five minutes he was like they are getting ready to um outnumber us and if they outnumber us they gonna take over so let now it's time for us to kill all of them kill all of the males kill kill all of them the males kill them okay um he made their work harder we're not gonna give them the straws we're not gonna give them everything that they need that they could easily do this no we're gonna make the work hard so y'all was trying to take us out up from under the yoke of pharaoh and he wanted to give them a yoke didn't say they wasn't gonna have one but y'all was gonna give them a yoke that wasn't burdensome okay he was going to give them one that wasn't burdensome. Deuteronomy 6, 3 through 5 read. This is what Yah gave. This is the yoke that he presented to the children of Israel. He says, hear then, O Israel, and take heed to do it, that he may be well with you, that you may increase greatly as Yah, the Elohim of your fathers, has promised you in the land flowing with milk and honey. And you shall love Yah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Okay? You shall love Yah, 
your Elohim, Elohim, not Elohim, but Elohim, Olive Lamed, Elohim, the strong authority with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Let's read this precept. This is our Messiah, Yeshua. This is the yoke that Yah gave to us. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. This is Yeshua, our master speaking. Come to me, all those who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Bear my yoke upon you and learn from me that I am meek and humble in heart, and you will find your souls. Look at this. This was the yoke that Yah wanted to give to the children of Israel. Yeshua said, come to me, all those, all of you who are weary, all of you who are carrying those heavy burdens. He said, I'm gonna give you rest, bear my yoke. Accept the responsibility. We gonna keep going back over these definitions. Because when you're bare, that's the shoulder. Remember that, to bear is the shoulder, to accept the responsibility. Accept the responsibility of my yoke. My yoke, the yoke that means to teach, to impart knowledge, his Torah, his law is his teaching and instruction. He said, accept the responsibility of my law, my teachings and instruction. And he says, and learn from me. I am the word, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He says that I'm meek, come and learn that I'm meek, I'm gentle, I'm humble at heart. You will find your soul because he is a way, the truth, and the life. Are you understanding what I'm saying? He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy. Didn't say that you wasn't gonna have one. You, he, he, he wanted to bring us out of the house of bondage and slavery, out from up under the, the burdensome and heavy laden burden and yoke that the Pharaoh was putting on us. He wanted to bring us out and to bring us up under his yoke, his word. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. First John five and three says, for this is a love of Yah. This is a precept. For this is a love of Yah that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not what? Look at this. His commandments are not burdensome. This is love that we keep his commandments, not a, a, a warm, fuzzy feeling. <laughs> Y'all has conditions. There's no such thing as unconditional love. I don't love anybody unconditionally. You have to prove your love to Yah. He says, don't even call the person your friend. Prove them, he says to see if they're a real friend. Everybody, he says, your friend when everything is going well and you got money and everything's going, this is what's going with these celebrities. They, they got plenty of friends, family that come all out the woodwork when they rich and got money and famous. And then when they lose it all, I remember MC Hammer and the thing that he, they had did on um, TV One, and he said all those people, that he was taking care of hundreds of families and all those people abandoned him when he didn't have no money. Yah is not like that. He says, this is a love of Yah that we keep his commandments and his commandments is not a burden. Do you understand? Because his yoke is his Torah, is his word. He says, I'm meek, I'm gentle, I'm humble in heart. This is the love of Yah that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not a burden. You see, with this yoke that Yah wanted to present to Israel when he said to Shema Israel, okay? Shema Israel, Shema in the Hebrew, Shema means to hear and to hear means to obey, okay? When someone says, and I've used this example a billion times, if I tell my son to do something and he hasn't done it, 
I told him this clean is clean his room on Monday. He hasn't cleaned it. I come back on Wednesday. He, he hasn't clean it. Did you clean your room? Yeah, I heard you. Okay, yeah. But he still hasn't done it. By Friday, he still hasn't done it. Has he really heard me? Y'all's not talking about audible words coming out his mouth. In the Hebrew, to hear means to obey. That means you do it. You are listening with the intent to obey. That's what it means when he says Shema to hear. You are listening with the intentions of obeying him. Not I heard you, but I haven't moved my foot to do anything. Because now you getting ready to get popped. Because all week I've been telling you to clean your room and you haven't done it. Now I got to, there going to be some consequences. Because you, you, you ain't like, you, what's, what's that? What's that saying? They say, you don't hear me though. They don't hear the, They don't hear you though. He, he, he gives his word and his commands and says, Shema Israel with the intent that you will obey. Okay. Yeah. With, when he told Israel, Shema Israel, meaning listen, and I need you to obey me. This yoke that he presented to Israel, he presented this yoke and that with this yoke, it would show the children of Israel the way. His yoke would show the children of Israel the way who is Yeshua because Yeshua is his word, okay? And so a yoke, well, I want to say to show this. This here, what you're looking at is a picture of another word this is actually this word is burton and it's and we're and, and i want you to look again from the right to left because remember in the hebrew we, we we read from the right to left right from right to left okay um this word is um burton this is a written in paleo hebrew okay i told you today that we were going to be studying the, the hebrew letters and their words and their roots as they are defined in the ancient culture context. I told you that earlier today. So this, this word is, if you can screenshot it, if you're on your laptop, or you can take a picture of it with your phone. But this word means burden, okay? Yod, going from the right, where you see the picture that looks like the arm, that's yod, Y-O-D, hey, H-E-Y, and then bet, B-E-T, which is the house. Notice how, and something just came to my mind, notice how the blackest TV station on cable is BET, BET. They know who we are. They know we're the house of Israel. The BET means house. They know. That's the blackest station on cable. They've been throwing um, subliminal hints to us because they know we don't know. They even had one on Sanford and Son. About him, Fred was telling them, we kings, we, we're kings. And he was like, you crazy. They was telling us on good times where their so-called black JC that was hanging on the wall. They've been telling us because they know we don't read. But this word here, the yod, hay, and the bet means burden. A burden, it means a heavy gift to bury. I mean, a heavy gift to bear. This is what this means. A heavy gift to bear. This what he was taking the children of Israel from out up under. He was removing them and uh, the heavy gift that Pharaoh had given. And he was going to give them the gift of life, the gift of his son. He, to bear his yoke and to learn from him. He says in verse 30, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's not heavy. Okay, no testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone, but Yah is faithful who will not allow you to be tested above what you are able. But with the testing, he will also make um, the way, the make the way out, but so that you may be able to bear it. So a lot of people, they read, uh, you ever had like sayings that you thought <laughs> was in the Bible only to find out later on 
that they were never there. When people say, oh, God will never give you um, anything, a burden that's too hard for you to carry or too hard for you to bear. That's not in the scripture. That's not what he said. It's inevitable that we will be tested. We will be tested. And I'm going to say this again. We will be tested. Okay. However, it's not about he's not going to give us something that's too a burden that's too heavy for us to bear. It's talking about being tested beyond what we can bear. Even Yeshua was tested when he was in the um when in the Garden of Gethsemane. The first thing that he did when he is with Yeshua is take him into the wilderness to be tested by Satan. Okay. And even though he was weak because he had been fasting and praying for 40 days and 40 nights, and that's when Satan came, right while he was weak, trying to offer him everything else. And then he told him, get thee behind me, depart from me, thou shalt worship the Most High Yah only. That's what he told him. It is written. He, he bore himself up with the word. It is written. And it's, then he said he sent the cherubim and the angels to come and minister unto him, using the word. This scripture is basically saying that testing is inevitable. Testing is inevitable and temptations will come, but in the face of the temptation, when the test temptation or when the test comes, testing, and even when you're being tempted, this is a test of your resolve, a test of your character, a test of your faith, and you're trusting y'all. Many of us don't really trust y'all like we think we do because when the test comes, we fail. Do you understand? We buckle. He says that I'm not going to allow you to be tested above what you're able to bear. But when the test, but even with the testing, he's going to make a way out so that you'll be able to bear it. A lot of times when we're being tested, He's not going to test you, put you to the test to, on something that he know that is no way you're going to be able to come out. He's waiting, he's waiting and watching to see if you're going to endure or what you're going to do when, when temptation comes, when you're tested and you're put in a situation. What you going to do? Okay? This is going to show your character and your resolve. It's going to show what your faith is really made of. Is your faith strong? Is your faith weak? Where, where are you in your walk when, when temptation comes? When the enemy comes, like he came to you, sure, when he was weak. Where, where your faith, where's your faith at at that moment? When the enemy comes and he presenting something to you. Did, did y'all really say? He did that with Adam and Eve. Did he really say? Don't ever forget those words. Did y'all say? Did he really say that? Because he's coming to question. Do you think Satan don't know what y'all say? Of course he does. You being tested. He's allowing it to happen so that y'all can see what you're really made of. What you gonna do when the test comes? When temptation comes? Because it's coming. What you gonna do? Matthew eleven thirty 30 says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So he's not going to allow you to be tested above what you're able he will make a way out for you to escape that's why he says don't give sin a foothold don't put yourself in situations knowingly that you're going to put yourself in a situation where you're going to sin and then if you're not putting yourself in a situation where you're going to sin sometimes satan gonna bring it he gonna come through somebody else oh she too strong today she ain't trying to have it oh he too strong today he he, he, ain't, he ain't got he ain't giving me two seconds he ain't listening to nothing i'm sending some some spirits this way he ain't trying to hear that okay let me go to that weak brother or sister they ain't strong and let's see i know this person you know um weak for this person or weak for for this job or weak for something maybe you um have something that you've been having your eye on that you really want, you know? He like, okay. Cause even they study us, they watch us. They know everything they watch it. I know what she really like. I know what he really like, okay. She's strong today. She don't told me, get thee behind me, Satan. He don't said, thou shalt serve the most high, y'all only. 
Let me go to that weak brother or sister that's not strong, that inexperienced younger ox, and see if I can get them to cause this more experienced ox to fall off. This is how I say word. He don't never stop. He does not, he never stops. Do you understand that? He there, he is relentless. There is no quit with him. He is determined to bring as many people to hell. And we got to stop falling for the banana in the tailpipe. We got to know when he coming. Sometimes even with Yeshua, he told Peter, because Peter cut the, the, the soldier's ear off. He had to tell Peter, he wasn't talking to Peter. He was talking to the spirit that was influencing Peter because he knew what he had to do. He knew the joy that was set before him. He had to go and die for us. He wasn't going to have nobody to stop that, including Peter. Do you understand? So sometimes people with in good intentions, they may be influenced, not saying they're possessed, but may be influenced. Maybe they don't heard something in their spirit and they're speaking it and it's not his will. So we have to be careful with that. So let's watch this quick video. And we'll come right back. In agricultural societies, animals are tied together using wooden crosspiece fitting around their necks called a yoke. A yoke enables the animals to pull together, thus gaining the full benefit from their combined strength. This is used frequently in plowing, pulling loads, and other activities. This Cambodian farmer is using oxen yoked together to plow his rice field. Notice how the oxen move slightly from side to side while they are walking. Oxen have a certain speed, rhythm, and side to side motion. The oxen can adapt to the movement of one another, enough to cooperate because they're the same animal. These Indian farmers have yoked donkeys together to plow their fields. The donkeys have a different pace, rhythm, and side-to-side -side movement than do the oxen. In 2 Corinthians 6, it says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. The image that Paul uses here is probably from Deuteronomy 22.10. You shall not plow with an ox and a donkey together. The practical reason for not yoking two different kinds of animals is that they will not work well together. An ox and a donkey move at different speeds, walk in different rhythms, and move from side to side in unique ways. The result would be an inability to cooperate. It would likely result in conflict between the animals, perhaps damaging the valuable yoke or even injuring the animals. Okay, so this video I felt really kind of showed um why we're not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers um so a yoke allows the farmer to take as i said earlier a younger inexperienced ox and to train it to pull the plow by yoking it with an older more experienced ox and so the older ox would then uh pull the yoke while the younger more inexperienced ox would watch and learn how to plow and so let me use this example an example uh is of a teacher okay i'm an educator um when you're uh, the teacher and you're instructing there are certain times during the lesson where the teacher is going to model for the student um the teaching or the instructions okay she's or she or he is modeling for the students and um, the students are to watch, okay? And during this time that the teacher is instructing, um, the students are limited during their instruction as far as what they're going to do because when the teacher is modeling, the teacher, now this is not um, where they're doing um, independent practice is this is the part of the lesson where the teacher is modeling and the teacher is expecting while he or she is modeling a specific concept or a teaching something that she wants them to understand the students are watching okay this is and during the time that they're watching they're limited as far as activity and the things that they're doing but just during that portion of the modeling okay um this is the same thing with a farmer with an ox an older ox and when an older ox is uh yoked together with a younger um and less experienced ox 
the less experienced ox is being trained, is watching, and it's that this is how this um, younger, inexperienced ox learns how to plow by being joined and watching the older and experienced ox and learning. Um, something else that I wanted to make note of that's coming to my mind while I'm <laughs> teaching is the, the burden of plowing. And I think I may have said this earlier, but I'm just repeating it again, just, just in case. But the burden of plowing lies on the older and experienced ox. I think I did say that. But just in case, I don't want to make sure I leave this teacher when I was saying this. The burden, and you can write this down, the burden of plowing is on the older and experienced ox. And this is why Yeshua said, come learn of me. We, we read this earlier where Yeshua said, come learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay, so um, again, um, what Yeshua is saying when he says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. What he is saying is, follow me. Follow me. Walk as I walk. You who are younger and inexperienced, come learn of me. I'm going to take my yoke. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. I'm the older and experienced ox. I'm going to accept and bear the responsibility. I'm going to bear you up. I'm going to hold you up. You're going to find light for your soul. Are you understanding what I'm saying? He's saying, follow me to that, in, that younger, inexperienced ox. Follow me. Walk as I walk. That's why I say you cannot plow a, a donkey and an ox together. They can't. They're not. We just saw it in the video. It's not going to work. How can two walk unless they obey, unless they agree? Do you understand that? Two people, one person is trying to serve you and one is not. It's not going to work unless you both want to serve him. You're going to always be in conflict. or and water, water don't mix. Light and darkness. He says, what association do they have? Be ye not yoked to, um, be unequally yoked to unbelievers. So again, Yeshua is saying, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. He's saying, follow me. Do what I do. Walk as I walk. Okay? When Yah presented the children of Israel with his yoke, which was his word, Yeshua, to obey, Israel eventually rejected his yoke. Okay? They rejected his yoke, which was easy in life. They chose to be burdened with heavy laden. They chose a yoke that was not only a yoke that was not of peace, but they chose a yoke of persecution. They chose a yoke of affliction and relentless curses. They chose a yoke, the children of Israel. They chose a yoke of relentless curses. They broke the covenant in the everlasting oath. This is what they did. So we're gonna we're still going into the parent root word remember a parent root word and if you didn't write this down write it down is when you have either two letters or two pictographs when they're put together they form a parent root word okay there's a many everything in the hebrew is action there is an action with the intent that something is going to change something is going to be moving it's not stagnant faith is not stagnant peace is not stagnant sometimes if he's if you're praying for peace, that means that something, peace is not remaining in one place. Peace means I might have to remove some people from your life, some people that whom you love. You might have, I might be for peace. You might have to quit your job. Peace, you, we don't know how peace, sometimes we don't know the outcome until after the fact. It's like, you know, he was trying to bring me to peace and I was just like that, that ox. I was just like that donkey. Just like we saw in that video, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to come. He tried, you prayed for peace, and yet you're resisting it. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay, so the parent root word for O, okay, is also Aleph Lamed. I'm going to show you there's two meanings for O. 
I want to show you how yolk and oat, they have the same two pictographs, but there's two different meanings for it. Okay, the first meaning for oath represents the power of the oxus muscles to perform the work. We'll say this again. The first meaning represents the power of the um, oxus muscles to perform the work. Now, we have to think about this. <laughs> Who's your, if it depends on your strong authority. That's going to depend on your ability to be able to perform the work. The power represents the one who holds the authority over others. Remember, I told you that could be anyone, okay? Power represents the one who holds authority over others in the sense of being yoked to one another. Power and might is of he who rules and teaches. So who is the strong authority in your life, okay? Power, the first meaning of oath represents the power of the oxus muscles to perform the work. So if you don't have no power, how are you going to do the work? If you weak, if your authority is weak, your power is going to be weak too. Let's read this. Who's your authority? Romans, this is a precept. Romans 6 and 16 says, do you not know that when you offer yourselves as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin leading to death or to obedience leading to righteousness? So who, who, is, who is your power? Who rules you? Who rules your life? Who's teaching you? Who's instructing you? Who's your strong authority? Because the strong authority in your life is going to tell you the power and the strength that you have. If your power is strong and is strong in this word, that tells you that Yah is your authority, Yeshua. But if it's weak, if it's anything besides Yah and his son, your authority is of the adversary. You're weak. You have no power. How do you get power? Let's talk about oath. Let's talk about the second one, okay? Because the first one tells you, it, it talks about the ox's um, power or ability to be able to perform the work. The second meaning of oath represents a revealing of the strong authority. That's why I asked you the question, who is your strong authority? This is oath too. Look, look at this. This is oath too. When you look at this going from right to left, in the upper right hand corner, we have the modern day uh, spelling of this. And then we have, um, we have the um, Paleo Hebrew in the center, which is the pictographs. So the second meaning of oath represents a revealing of the strong authority. So we have the Aleph, we have the Lamet, and then we have the uh, Hebrew letter He. Okay. The Aleph, recapping again, is a picture of an ox. It represents strength. The Lamet is a picture of a shepherd's staff. It represents authority, and it means to teach. It means to impart knowledge or uh, teach or discipling. Okay? The Hebrew letter, hey, okay, is a, the last word that you see going from um, right to left. The picture is a picture of a man with his arms raised out or up. It represents revelation or revealing of a great sight. Okay. It means to behold. Okay. To behold. When you look at a great sight, it means to behold. Okay. This letter means to behold. It means breath. It means sigh. Think about that. It means breathe. Spirit, rock. Y'all breathed into breath into the nostrils of man, and that man became a living soul. He breathed the word. Spirit. This the Hebrew letter He is commonly used as a prefix to words to mean the, as in Hamashiach, which means the Messiah, Hamashiach, He. 
okay? So, again, Aleph, A, with picture of an ox, L, Lamed, picture of a shepherd's staff, Hey, which is Revelation. And you saw a picture of a man, okay? With his arms up, okay? When you are trying to point out something, when you're trying to reveal something, when there is a revelation, okay, that you're trying to reveal from the idea of something that you were building, something of a great sight you pointed out, these three together means the full revelation of the Messiah. The Allah, the Lamed, and Hey, Allah. He says, I am the Aleph and I am the Ta. I am the beginning and the end. Look at this. Just look at that for a second. These three together means the full revelation of our Messiah, the beginning and the end. Genesis and Revelations. The totality of who he is, is the full revelation of our Messiah, okay? I want you to really pay attention to this. I really want you to pay attention to this because this is, we getting ready to go deep and, and we getting ready to go deep. Look what, we're gonna read this here, uh, Matthew chapter three, we're gonna read verses nine and 10. And do you not think, no, and do not think that you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. Yeshua said, I tell you that out of these stones, y'all can raise up children for Abraham. So don't just think, oh, we Abraham is our father. See, the Pharisees, they didn't care anything <laughs> about people. Yeshua accused them. He said, you know, the, you can count the, the, the tie and the mint and the kuma. He said, but the things, the weightier matters of the Torah, like mercy and charity and love. He said, you, you failed to do these things with my people. These are the things that have more weight. Don't just say, oh, we, 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 Abraham is our father. He said, I can raise up these stones. <laughs> to raise up children for Abraham about one. He said, don't go around being boast, boasting about who you are and who your father is. He says, because even now in verse 10, the ax lies ready at the root of the tree, ready to sever the roots of the tree, to cut off, to cut you off. Stop bragging and boasting that you're Israel. I can, he said, I can raise up stones to be children of Israel. I can raise up stones to be children of Abraham. He says, but even now, he said, the, the, the ax is right here by the tree, ready at the root to cut you off. He says, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and put in the fire. You see, The Pharisees, all they cared about was the law. They was always coming to accuse, always ready to kill everybody according to the law. Yeshua said that <laughs> all they cared about is their outward appearance, how long their tassels was dragging around. He said they lengthened their tassels so everyone can hear them. They got all this, guy. this is what you see in Israel right now. Superhero costumes, they got all kinds of stuff on everything so that I can look holy on the outward. He said, you are a cup that's filthy on the inside. Your cup may look clean on the outside, but on the inside, you're filthy. He says, I do not look and judge like men do. I do not look at the outward appearance. He said, I look at the heart. Yes, the inheritance is going to Israel. Yes, he's going to remarry those same people. But trust, there were people who came along with the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. It wasn't just them. 
He talked about the stranger that sojourns himself with you. They must abide by the same law. You're not getting me, knowing that you Israel and you the chosen people, it's not your golden goose ticket into the kingdom. Many of you are still fornicating. Many of you are still committing adultery. You teaching damnable doctrines like sexist marriage. All you're concerned about is trying to have 10 wives, yet you're not even walking according to his word. All you want to go around talking about kill, kill the white man, hate the white man, screaming and yelling at people, telling everybody they going to hell, yet you're not obeying them. He says, you who call yourself Judah, you, you call yourself an Israelite. You say that you learn in the Torah. You beat your monkey chest. I'm we the chosen people. You think you can go around here and oppress other nations, even people who want to come into the faith, yet you not walking right. He said, you tell people not to kill, yet you kill. You tell people not to murder, yet you murder. You tell people not to commit adultery, yet you commit adultery. He says, through you, how you acting? Stand on here on this corner, screaming at people, telling people to hate people just based off of what they look like. That's the same thing that's being done to you, by the way. <laughs> he said, through you, my name is blasphemed before the heathens, before these nations that don't know me. Through you, I'm being blasphemed. The name of Yah is being blasphemed, being drugged through the mud. So much so that people think that we're in a cult. And that's not true. You out here with your um, Ninja Turtle superhero costume on and nobody can understand anything you're doing, screaming at people with bullhorns. You are causing people to not want to come into the faith because they think that that's what this is about. This don't have nothing to do with that. This is, we, what we teach is the straight Bible. This is not about, um, yes, there is a nation, and yes, we, he is going to remarry us. That inheritance is belong, belongs to us. But don't think that salvation is only to you. Look what he says in verse 10. The Pharisees, all they cared about was the letter. That's why he told you that the letter kill us, but the spirit gives life. The letter is meant to kill so that we can learn how to walk according to the set apart spirit. Just knowing the law and you don't have the spirit is not getting you into the kingdom. There's plenty of people who have read the Bible, know the Torah front and back, but they have been water baptized, but they have not been baptized by fire. They do not know him. Do you understand what I'm saying? They don't have the spirit. They have no power. Those who are led by the spirit of Yah are the children, the sons of Yah. He said, so don't boast in the fact that Abraham is your father. He said, I can raise up these stones as to be children of Abraham if I wanted to. He said, even now the, the ax is lying ready at the root of the tree, ready to cut you off, ready to cut your stiff neckness off. That's what's the problem with our people right now. That's the reason why we're going through what we're going through right now. Many of you are being cut off. He says, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown in the fire. He does not care. <laughs> if you Israel, if you still walk in unrepentant sin, when he come back, he doesn't care. You're going to be in a lake. So stop with your boasting. Boast in him. We don't have nothing to boast in. All Israel care about is the fact, many of them are, he says, if you come in another way, you are a thief and a robber. Many of Israel, they're only there for the opportunity. They're there for the opportunity of what they think they can get the byproducts of their inheritance that comes with being the chosen people. But they ain't interested in, in, in truly serving y'all. They ain't even obeying them. They ain't even keeping the commandments. Yet they stand out here on corners with all this Ninja Turtle hero gear on, screaming at people, talking about they not getting to the kingdom. That's why he said that he, they gonna pass up under that rod. That rod that's gonna be in the wilderness again is the yoke that's, that many of them, he says, gonna be cut off. Stop boasting in the fact that you Israel. So 
Again, the O, the Allah, the Lamed, or the Lamet, and the He is the strong or is a revelation of the strong authority. It is the revealing of the strong authority. So let's quickly talk about the purpose of the gifts. Ephesians 4, 11 and 13 says, and indeed, Yah has assigned some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some shepherds and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of the Messiah, until we all may come to the unity of the faith and until full knowledge of who the Son of Yah is, that we will be mature in our Master Yeshua, measuring up to the full and complete standard of the Messiah. Look at that for a second. This is the purpose of the gifts. The purpose of the gift is not for you. <laughs> let, me, let me put pastor in front of my name. Let me put um, apostle. No, 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 that's not good enough. No, I want to be super prophet. That's what our people doing. I talk to people and I know what their name is. My call by their name. Oh no, no, I oh no, no, I, I'm I'm pastor such and such. Oh, oh no, no, I'm I'm prophet such. And such. Oh no, no, I'm apostle. No, I'm super duper apostle. That's not the purpose of the gifts for for you to be, to build your and exalt yourself. The purpose of the gifts is just a title that you operate under. I have the gift of prophecy. I have the gift of discernment and the gift of teaching. I don't have to go around talking about I'm prophet such and such and I'm apostle this and I'm, I don't have to do that. I'm teacher such and such. Oh, I'm no, I'm a super teacher. The reason why he assigned these gifts, and there are many, is for the perfecting of the saints, the believing ones and y'all. It's for the building up of the work of the ministry, building up the body of the Messiah that all of us who are in the body will come into the full unity of the faith, coming into the full knowledge of who the Messiah is so that we will be spiritually mature, measuring up to the full and the complete standard of the Messiah. Remember, we talked about this earlier. I'm you not faith, building up, bearing the burdens of others. You are fulfilling the law of the Messiah. Okay, a spiritually mature ox doesn't resist. When we become spiritually mature, that's why Paul said, let us press on to maturity. Okay, this means let us be spiritually mature. Let's, let us be an oxen that is yoked to, the, to Yeshua. If you are a spiritually mature believer, you are a believer, an oxen that is yoked to Yeshua, who is the older and more experienced ox. When you're spiritually mature and moving on to spiritual maturity, you are then ready and useful to him. You are part of the process where now you can help others to learn. You're being discipled. And then you will learn how to disciple. You're being taught. You're walking as he walks. You're that younger, inexperienced oxen that is walking with him. You're yoked to him. As he walk, you walk. He put his left, right, left foot forward. You put your left foot forward. You, he put his right foot forward. You put wherever he goes, you goes. Whatever he does, you do. What he says, how he talk, that's how you talk. Are you understanding? It's not about knowing that he said, like you said, the law. The letter, the law killer, the letter killer is not just about knowing the law, but it's about walking by the spirit. This is all, it's, don't you see, this is all about Yeshua. This is all about him. It's always been about him from the very beginning. So oath, again, the first meaning for oath, I have the pictographs there on the left. The first meaning for oath represents the power of the ox's muscles to perform the work. The second meaning for oath represents a revealing of the strong authority. Power, again, represents the one who holds authority over others. Power and might of he who rules and teaches, who, if you're a believer, should be assured he is our head. 
So this is the point that I want our people to understand. This is why am I taking you to through the different meetings? I told you earlier, we are going to study, we were gonna we were gonna study letters and, and Hebrew words and their roots in the ancient cultural context. In context, sometimes that means it's more than one meaning. These are the two meanings for O. Represents the power of the oxus muscles to perform. And it also re represents the revealing of that, throng, of that strong authority. Okay, that that ox is working for. Okay, and oath is a binding agreement. Okay, not just for the blessings, but it also included the curse for violating the oath. So when the children of Israel who said all the guys said we will do, they were they were agreeing more than just to the just those blessings. Yeshua said, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants for all generations, an everlasting covenant. So let's talk about swear. Because he told us that we are not to swear. Stop saying, I swear to God. And stop saying, I swear. He told us we're not to do that. Let me, let me show you why. Swearing is the yoking together of two parties. It is a treaty or a covenant that binds two parties together through an oath, which is a yoke. So a, a yoke is an oath. An oath is the same thing as swearing. The oath includes the blessings for abiding by the covenant and the curses for breaking the covenant, according to Deuteronomy 28. So did you know that swearing is the placing of oneself in a binding agreement. I want to say that. Did you know that swearing is a placing of yourself in a binding agreement to a course of action? You are agreeing. Remember, I told you in the Hebrew, these things and oh, there is it is an oath is an uh, um, a, a yoke is an oath, and an oath is a when you're swearing, and when you're swearing. Like when you go to court and they make you raise your right hand, okay? They make you raise your right hand when you go to court and you and they what they ask you to do. Do you swear to tell the truth? You know, by so help you God, this, this is what they do, right? When you go to court. Why? Because you are placing yourself in a binding agreement to a course of action. And this also includes a curse or punishment if you violate the oath. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, um, let's look. Let's look at this now. These two, these two, the children of Israel, and when we, let's talk about in the context of Yah, the power of the Israelites. You know what? That's not what I want to say. Just take a look at these two, these, this two oxen. They have the yoke on their shoulder. This yoke represents obedience. Okay. Because it represents his word. And who is his word? Yeshua. Obedience creates authority. Okay. When we become slaves, you're going to be obedient, as the scripture says, <laughs> to either him. And if you don't, uh, 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 you're not going to be obedient to him. You're going to come up under the authority of someone else. So again, obedience creates authority because whoever we become slaves to and whoever we come up under the authority of, that is who we are obeying. Many of us by default are obeying the adversary, uh, the adversary Satan, and don't even know it. Okay? So whoever we come up under authority of, that is who we obey, meaning who we become yoked with when we obey them, okay? Whether that's Yah or Satan. Again, Yah presented, as I told you earlier, he presented the children of Israel with a yoke that will bring them into the promised land, a land he said that will be flowing with milk and honey. You know, this was a land that will be fat, that would nourish them, give them the protein, everything they needed, okay? A yoke that if properly followed, okay, would yield the blessings of the covenant inheritance. 
Yeshua is the word. He is a burden bearer. Okay. That's why he said, come learn of me. If you tired, if you heavy burden, come learn of me. I'll, I will accept the responsibility of bearing it for you. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is a burden bearer. He is the word. Let's talk about timing. Okay. Let's talk about timing as it pertains to the yoke. Because as I said, the younger experience, the younger inexperienced ox will watch. Will watch the older experienced ox who was modeling. Okay. Showing the younger inexperienced ox how to walk. He's this older experienced ox is discipling, is training, is imparting knowledge to this younger ox. Okay. And so timing is very important because remember, Yeshua said, follow me. Timing is important as it pertains to the yoke because if we walk ahead of the yoke, who is Yeshua, if we walk ahead of the yoke, the burden of carrying the heavy burden will fall on us. The cart will fall on us. Everything will fall on our shoulders. And then we will soon <clears throat> become tired and burnt out because we're carrying a yoke that he said, if you follow me, you don't have to. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so if we walk behind the cart, okay, or behind the load, let me say, I'll use this example. Have you ever been in a grocery store? You got the grocery cart. And I've had this with my son, like, well, I want to push the cart. Okay, instead of him walking side by side, he he behind me with the cart. And because he's pulling it from behind, he's scraping the back of my heels. Okay, this is not a pleasant feeling if you've ever been in a grocery store and the back of the cart scrapes against you, the back of your heel. That hurts. That I have been in excruciating pain, okay, having had that happen. This is what I'm talking about when I say this, timing, okay? If we walk with him and we follow his lead and we watch him, we study his ways, the burdens of carrying the heavy load falls on his shoulders, okay? Not ours. This is when we become spiritually mature, if you know what I'm saying. And so the power of the Israelites is known, and we, who is our power? Yah. He is known as the older ox, okay, that is yoked to his people in a covenant relationship. We are yoked whether we want to or not. He, he said, he told us in Deuteronomy 29 and 9 that we were to pay attention to all the words in the book so that we may act wisely. He told us that this word is just not just for you who are standing here today. He said, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you. Heaven and earth are our two witnesses that we took that covenant. He said, it's not just heaven. And, it's not just for you and not just for your wives and, and your animals and your children. He said, but this covenant is for everyone here who is not standing here today. Not just you all who are here, but everyone else who's not standing here today. Newsflash. That's us. We weren't there when our forefathers said all that God said we will do. But our forefathers, our descendants entered into agreement. They were yoked. Okay? Our, they were yoked to our power. And they entered into a covenant relationship. Anyone or anything, again, as I said earlier, that functions as the strong authority is seen as the older Yah. In this case, it is Yah. But our people, we didn't want to listen. We, we rejected. We did not want to obey. We were stiff necked. We didn't want his yoke that he said was light and easy. Again, oath represents, this is the first definition for oath or the first meaning for oh, represents the power of the oxus muscles to perform the work. That's why we, we have no power. We have rejected the yoke. 
Isaiah 1, 2, and 3 says, Hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth. See, the Yah is saying for heaven and earth, be calling them to the stand and listen because they were there when we said all uh, Yah said we would do. <clears throat> he says, for Yah has spoken. He said, I have enlarged and I have brought up sons and they have rebelled against me. <laughs> they have rebelled, Yah says. He says, the ox knows his owner and the donkey, his master's manger. He said, but Israel does not know. He said, my people don't even consider. Are you looking at this? <laughs> he says that my people do not even consider. Oh boy. There's some, uh, there's a, a deeper learning that I'm trying to take you guys into today. And I pray that you will get it. I wanted to read another precept. Therefore, my people, he says, will go into exile for their lack of knowledge. Okay. Remember, the Lamed was the shepherd's staff that taught to impart knowledge. Our people rejected it. Look at them. They didn't want it. They're doing just like that ox is right there. I don't want it. Being stiff necked. He says, therefore, my people, since they don't want knowledge, he said they're going to go into exile for their lack of knowledge. He says, their honored men will go hungry and their multitude is parched with thirst. That's why he called us the dry bones. Prophesied to those dry bones because we're dry. We have no water. Who is, who is the water? Who is the living water? It is Yeshua. Even, y'all says, even the stork in the sky knows her seasons and the turtle dove and the swift and the thrush observe the time of their migration. He says, but my people, they don't even know the requirements of y'all. Look at this. He said, my people don't even know what I require because they refuse to be taught. So again, the parent root word, Israel agreed to an oath, they swore, they swore. Remember, a yoke is an oath, an oath, an oath means to swear. They said in Exodus 19, eight, all the people, say this again, all the people that were standing here and heaven and earth was a witness. They answered together and said, all that Yah has spoken, we will do. They all swore together that they would do whatever Yah has commanded. And then Moses brought back the words of the people to Yah. Again, an oath is the same thing as swearing. And then when you have sworn, you are not yoked. You are not bound. You are not joined. You are now a slave. Remember, we learned earlier that it also means slavery. That means a servant. An oath, a swearing yoke is a placing of oneself in a binding agreement to a course of action, including a curse for violating the oath. So when we agree and say all that Yah has said we will do, we didn't just agree to the blessings. We agree <laughs> to the curse if we didn't if we didn't keep it. Nobody takes an oath and say, you know what, I agree to the curses. They say, well, I didn't never say that. I, I never said that I agreed to curses. You didn't, when you agree and say all the guys said we will do, again, in Hebrew, an oath is swearing, swearing is a yoke. You are not bound to this earth, this, this agreement. This is a binding agreement. And it requires action on your part, meaning you must perform it. Remember, we talked about the ox, it's the power that the ox has to perform it. And if you don't perform it, you are also agreeing to the curses that are attached to it. This curse is, these are the consequences that was attached to this agreement that you swore you were gonna keep and you didn't do it. This is what I'm trying to get our people to understand. Get past 
what's going on and what you see on TV and, and, and see what I'm showing you right here. This is the solution. Not what they showing you on TV. Deuteronomy 20 and 15, it shall be, if you will not take heed to the voice of Yah, to take heed to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I am commanding you today, even all these curses shall come on you and overtake you. He said it. If you do not take heed to the voice of Yah, to do all his commandments and his statutes, remember the commandment is the law, is the rule. The statute tells you how to keep it. It tells you how you must serve him. You can't just serve him however you choose. He says, I'm commanding you today. If you don't, I'm letting you know all these curses gonna come over you and they're gonna overtake you because you swore an oath. You are binding yourself to it. So when we didn't obey, we, we had them curses. Just like somebody attach a rope around your waist. That is you dragging them curses right behind you. Everywhere you go and everywhere you turn, it's right there with you. It's just like your shadow. It ain't going nowhere. You Sometimes you can see the shadow <laughs> and sometimes you can't. But it's there. Oath also. Second Kings 17, 9 through 12. And the sons of Israel did, um, and the sons of Israel secretly did the things which were not right against Yah, their Elohim, and built places for themselves in all their cities from the tower of the watchmen to the fortified city, and set up for themselves pillars and astras on every high hill and ever and under every green tree, and burned incense there in all high places, like the nations that Yah had removed from their face and did evil things to provoke Yah, and serve the idols of which Yah has said to them, you shall not do this thing. And Yah testified against Israel and against Judah by the hand of all his prophets and every seer, saying, turn back from um, your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the Torah that I commanded your father. So see, he's saying, he didn't say to all the, according to all the Torah I commanded you, because they wasn't there. Now you look, he said that this is not just for you. Go back and read Deuteronomy 29 and 30. He said that this is not just for you who's standing here today. This is for everybody that's not here. All your descendants that's not even born yet. They are born by default. We are born into this covenant. We had these curses attached to us because our forefathers agreed to it. Do you understand? He didn't tell them, turn back from your evil ways and keep my commandments according to all the Torah that I commanded you. He said, I commanded your father. So that means you got to do it too, because it's an oath. He said, but they didn't listen. He says, they hardened their necks. Look at that. Write that down. They hardened their necks. Second Kings, write that down right now. Second Kings. 17 and what verse is this? Second, Second Kings 17 and 14. They hardened their necks like the necks of their fathers who did not remain faithful to Yah, their Elohim. And they rejected his statutes and his covenants that he cut with their fathers. Again, he's saying it wasn't with you, but it was your father. He said, but they rejected it. They said, well, look, I didn't do it. I wasn't there, but he said, look, <laughs> you you must, you better go back and read Deuteronomy 28. I mean, Deuteronomy 29 and 30. You must have forgot. You must, you you tied to this too. Look at them. Look at those oxen off to the side. They're like, mm, no, I ain't doing it. He says they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he cut with their fathers and his testimonies that he testified against them and went after the vain thing and became vain and after the nations that were around them of whom Yah had commanded them not to do like them. Don't do the things he said that the other nations are doing. He said, but no, they forsook all the commands of Yah. They didn't want nothing to do with them. Look at them, nothing. So let me go back here. Something that I wanna say <clears throat> quickly. We have something in, um, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to this. I'll go back to it in a second. 
So 2 Kings 17, verse 15 to 16 says, well, actually, this is 18 and 19. So says Yah, so that Yah was very angry against Israel. And because, because remember, they rejected it and they didn't want it. They stiffened their necks. So it says that Yah was very angry against Israel and turned them away from his face. Um, and not one was left. He says, only the tribe of Judah by itself. Also, Judah did not keep the commandments of Yah, the Elohim, and they walked in the statues of Israel that they had made. And Yah rejected all the seed of Israel. I'll say this again. And Yah rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and afflicted them and gave them into the hands of their plunderers. He said, oh, you don't want to serve me with joy and gladness? Oh, okay, I got you. Don't worry about it. You don't want my yoke? Oh, I got you. Don't worry about it. He says, until he had cast them out of his presence. So I want you to stop saying, I can't breathe. Stop saying that I can't breathe. I'm going to tell you why. <clears throat> Every time you say that I can't breathe, you are putting a curse on yourself, okay? Remember, what did y'all say? He says, life and death are in the power of the tongue, okay? Yeshua said that these words are what? Spirit, and they are life. So the wicked elite, don't think that they don't know y'all's strength. Okay, they do. Okay, the wicked elite got his ox who doesn't know who his master is. Because remember, Yah says that an ox knows his master, but he says, my people don't even consider. The wicked elite got his ox, the children of Israel, chanting a curse over themselves saying that I can't breathe. This is the exact reason why Hosea 4 and 6 says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Stop chanting this curse over yourself, saying you can't breathe. Because if you are in Yah and Yeshua, if you are a new creation in him, if you have his rock, if you have his Holy Spirit, you can breathe because his spirit is, is breath. Stop saying that I can't breathe. I'm trying to bring our people into a deeper understanding of what is going, because we're at the end. He, he set before us life and death. If you are walking in his ways, then you're receiving the blessings. If you are not, you're receiving the curses. Those Only those people who can't breathe is, are those who are yoked themselves to the curse of the oath, of the yoke that was, our, that was made with our forefathers. I want to recap the second meaning before I bring you into this very strong revelation. Again, the second meaning for oath is the is a revelation of the strong authority that teaches. The revelation of the strong authority that teaches. Those of us who are in education, you know what you're looking at on the screen right now, okay? There are four different levels in education that a child can um, demonstrate understanding of a concept or a teaching, okay? One, D-O-K, one, which is the symbol of recalling and defining things, and it goes all the way up to level four. D-O-K stands for depth of knowledge, okay? Which is, and level four um, is the highest level. I have synthesized. The synthesize is, which is another word for extended learning, okay? 
when you're when you're synthesizing this is a stage in a child's learning where they can take multiple sources of information and just think about this because this is what i'm doing to you right now okay this is a level where most teachers want we can't always remain here you have to go through all four levels because nobody starts off in level four you start off with one and then you continue to build up till you get to level four <clears throat> synthesizing is just one okay it's not all because there's other things that you can do in level four to demonstrate mastery of, of a concept or understanding but synthesizing is just one and so in this stage in level four when a child is synthesizing the child is able to take multiple sources of information that, that that has been given to them over an extended period of time so think about the the multiple sources of information that you have gotten that you have gathered through your notes that you have taken things that you have multiple sources of information that i have given to you that i've been teaching you imparting to you today over extended period of time when you get when you're able to synthesize you're able to take the the multiple sources of information that has been given to you over a extended period of time you're able to now transfer that knowledge that you have previously learned to another domain to another situation to be able to solve a problem or to deepen and apply your understanding in order to grow it's called we call it high order thinking or transitional learning where you can take something that you've learned in one domain maybe in reading and integrate it over into science or social studies to be able to solve another problem this is what we're doing right now i want you to synthesize to take all of the multiple sources of information everything that has been given to you over the extended period of this teaching and we're getting ready to now transition everything and put it all together to be able to broaden and deepen and apply understanding that we can grow and learn from what has been presented okay it is in this level level four that students find errors or they may find errors in their thinking or beliefs about things that they may have previously held or thought to be true things that you may have held or thought to be true many of you if you're watching this and you're a christian my prayer is that you will have changed it once you put all of what has been presented to you because i've given you nothing but the word so synthesizing let's put this all together and then i'm going to call printing and please do not leave because you get ready to get to we get ready to buckle up your seatbelts now synthesizing level four let's start the ala is a picture of an ox it represents strength the lamet is a picture of a shepherd's staff representing authority it also means to teach and to impart knowledge to disciple the hay hebrew letter hay which is also the numeric value of five this number is five it means the favor of yah okay this is a picture of a man with his arms raised out or up it represents a revelation or revealing of a great sight it means to behold and it means breath it means breath or to sigh so look at hey look at it this is the the paleo hebrew for the letter hey look look at that picture and i want you to look at it three seconds so the original pictograph for this letter is a man standing with his arms raised up or out it means revelation or revealing and it means breath now i want you to pay close attention to these pictures i couldn't believe this when y'all brought this to my understanding look at this i can't breathe remember this with trayvon martin remember this with mike brown don't shoot hands up hey look at this hey hey look at this hey if this is not it who is this people what is y'all trying to reveal to his people what is he trying to reveal what is he trying to reveal to his people look at this I want you to just look at this for a second. 
if we are, if we walk with him and follow his lead, watching him, studying his ways, the burden of carrying the heavy load, the yoke, will fall on his shoulders, not ours. We didn't have to be standing on here marching and protesting because he would go before us like he did in the days of old. Look at this. Hey, hey, what is he trying to reveal? Hey means breath, breath. Our people can come together for every foolish thing except for the truth. We can come together for every bit of foolishness you can think of except for the truth. Look at this. Talking about that yoke. Look at this. Look, look, look at this. He talks about the yoke. We don't want the truth. So therefore, he said in Deuteronomy 28, 48, that he shall put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. He's going to put an iron yoke not just a yoke. You know, I get ready to have that wooden yoke. Oh no. You get ready to have something worse. Because remember, our people, we refuse. Oh, we, we, we refuse to obey. We refuse his yoke. His yoke, who is his son, who is the word, who he said that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. We don't want his yoke. So he said, you don't want my yoke? Okay. I'm going to put the yoke of your oppressors on you. But not just any yoke. You don't want, you don't want my yoke that's light and easy on your shoulders, on your neck. Oh, I got, I, ooh, I got you. You get ready to have a yoke. Because remember, you go have a yoke regardless. We was either going to be under Pharaoh's yoke, that was very hard, or we were going to be up under his yoke, which was easy. Oh, we, who's our Pharaoh now? You looking at your Pharaoh. Look at your Pharaoh. Where is his, where is that yoke at? On his shoulders, on his neck. Until he has done what? Until he has destroyed you. Is that not what happened to George Floyd? What is, but listen, wait, but y'all say, oh, not so fast. Remember, I'm going to teach you, if you started to sign up for this course, it's going to be free. There's no reason why anybody listening shouldn't be a part of it, because you're getting ready to go to the next level in your understanding. Not just any, but look what y'all showed me. He said, point two. He said, you need to get them that in context. Get them this in context. Not just yo, but let me show you what he gave me. Strong Hebrews 12, 70. In context, when he said, since you don't want to serve me, oh, I'm, oh you're going to be up under the yoke of your enemy until he has destroyed you. Look what it means. Look at it. Strong Hebrews 12, 70. It means with harshness. It means with oppression. Look at the strength. It's weak. Look at this. Look, look at the ox on the right. He doesn't want it. The young, and I don't want your yoke that's light and easy. I don't want it. I reject it. it look, remember, 2 Kings 17 and 4 says that Israel stiffened their neck. Oh, you're going to stiff your neck? Oh, okay. I got you. I'm going to put an iron yoke on you. You ain't going to be able to stiffen your neck to that. And that yoke, is going to be on your neck until he has destroyed you. The yoke in context, that is, as it is being spoken of in Deuteronomy 28 and 48, strong Hebrews 12 and 70 means harshness. It means oppression. Did he not tell us that in Deuteronomy 28? He says that you're going to always be oppressed. You're going to always be oppressed, always be afflicted. He said, you never going to have no assurance for your life. This is you, so-called African-American. This is what I'm trying to get you to synthesize. This is the knowledge that I'm trying through this teaching to get you to understand so that you can solve the problem in order for you to grow. 
This is level four, transitional learning, taking everything you've seen up until this point and making connections. That's what teachers, when we do, we help our students to do is to make connection. I'm helping you to make a connection. This should have you weeping right now looking at this. Time for our people to repent. It's not gonna change. This, we made an oath. An oath is a yoke, it's swearing, not just for the blessings for keeping it, but you also yoked to that curse. That iron yoke that he put around our ancestors, around their neck, that iron yoke. When, this is today, this is 2020, look at your right. That's, that's your iron yoke right there. Harshness and oppression until he has destroyed you. Look at this. It says iron as cutting as an ax head. Strong Hebrews for yoke as in the context that it is being spoken of in Deuteronomy 28, 48, strong Hebrews 12, 70 says, harshness, strength, oppression, figuratively oppression. Iron, as in cutting, an ax, as in a head. What did he say? Don't brag. Don't brag, Israelite. Don't brag, so-called African-American. Those of you always bragging, we Israel. He said, don't bring this Abraham as your father. He said, I tell you, I can make these stones that y'all that y'all have over here. I can raise these stones up <laughs> for children of Abraham. Don't brag. He says, because even now, the ax lies ready at the root of the tree. Did you look at strong Hebrews 1270? It said oppression. It said ax as in cutting, for cutting your behind off. The ax, he says, lies ready at the root of the tree, ready to sever the root. Where the root? He says every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. And not at not the root, but at the root. We come from him. He's the vine, we're the branches. We're the original. He's gonna cut us off. He is going to cut you off. He's not gonna care that you Israel. He's not gonna care about how much Hebrew you speak. He's not gonna care about your tassels. He's not gonna care about you keeping the Sabbath and, and keeping the feasts however you choose to keep them. He's not going to care about all your um outfits that you have on. Do you think Israelite, how many, how many people can wrap your heads up and how much, how many times you can say Shalom? Okay. He's not gonna care about any of that. There will be people of other nations who will be in the kingdom and your raggedy tail will be in, in hell because you refuse to repent. He says, I'm gonna cut you off. You wanna be like that ox that don't want my yoke? Okay, I'm cutting you off. I'm, I'm, he says, don't even brag about you being Israel because even the ox is lying at the tree. He said, this ox is ready at the tree. I'm ready to cut your butt off. See, our, our so-called, all these ignorant rappers and, and ce celebrities, they're slaves. They're slaves to their strong authority who are the wicked elite that they have made an oath that they signed in blood that they made sacrifices to. They've been telling you then that you still are slave. They took the slaves off of our necks to iron, but now you, you was mentally, you, they mentally, we mentally enslaved. Now you got these gold chains around your neck. They telling you, you still are slave. We don't even realize it. <laughs> Put all these gold chains around our neck. You a slave. You a slave to the God of this world, Satan, 
who you serve. You just like that ox laying down, don't want his yoke. Then you want to whine and cry when, when they get killed in the street. That's why I'm on a different level when it comes to this. It's not that I don't care, it's I understand it. I'm trying to get you to understand this. Whining to your oppressors is not going to work. They don't care. They don't care about you being black and proud and standing up there as long as you black and ignorant. They don't care. You're wasting your time doing candlelight vigils, marching and Our people didn't march and um, when our people were oppressed. We called down righteous decrees of solemn fasting and prayer. That's what our people did. We, we caused the walls of Jericho to fall down through our praise, not through whining to people who are who will sit there as a whipping tool to spank your butt. Jeremiah 2 and 14 said, Israel's not a slave, is he? He was not born into slavery, was he? He said, if Israel's not a slave, then why is he being carried off? Why was we being carried off? Why were we slaves on that Chanum transatlantic slave ship? We chose slavery. People got mad at Kanye West when he said, we didn't choose slavery. He was right. We did choose it because our forefathers entered into an oath. They were yoked to Yah. They swore all that Yah had said we will do and they didn't do it. So that came with the curses too. We agree to it. Our people chose to break the laws, the statutes, and the judgments of Yah. We broke the everlasting covenant. Therefore, 400 years of slavery was a choice. Yah gave us two choices. Choose life so you and your descendants may live. I said before you, life and death, blessings and the curses. Choose life. We chose death. My job is not to come here and tell my we shall overcome and sing kumbaya and tell you everything gonna be okay and all oh, the, the bad white man how did they do this why 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 if you're watching this is why those of you who are watching you need to share this with every last family member friend pastors this teaching is gonna change lives share it so they can get off their knees and stop bowing down and put and, and chanting curses come on i can't breathe you can't breathe, that means you ain't got the rock. You don't have the spirit. I can breathe. I'm not chanting that. Stop with the foolishness. And every, these Black Lives Matter, all these people, they are a part of the agenda. They're agents. They're not there to help us, okay? Don't fall for the banana and the tailpipe with all these fake celebrities. All of a sudden, everybody in the world loved the so-called African-American. Are you kidding me? He says that woe be, be unto you when they all speak well of you. It's a trap. We were sent here for punishment. We were not sent here to build. We were not sent here to, I don't even know what to say at this point. I'm, I'm, I'm lost for words at this point. I'm, 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 I'm just praying that our people will get it. Our people, we just refuse to repent. We refuse to repent even if we destroy our own selves in the process. We rather carry the load <laughs> and the burden, <laughs> even though he said, look, bear, come learn to me. Take my yoke, it's easy. My burden is light. We'd rather be just like that, that ox on the right with a, up in the air. Can't even carry it and still rejecting them. This is us all day. This is us all day. Yeshua said, come to me all who are weary, who are heavy laden. He says, I will give you rest. When the the, the time, something I wanted to say quickly before I call pretty in is when Yeshua came in riding on the donkey. The significance of Yeshua coming in riding on, on the donkey was about humility. Okay? It was about humility because normally 
people of royalty and of honor, they come in riding on a horse. Well, Yeshua will be riding on the horse when he comes back in Revelations, not the one in Revelation 6 that's overcoming. That's the anti-Messiah. I'm talking about the one at the latter part of Revelation. I think it's 19. He's going to, when he comes back with the hosts and the chariots of angels, and he's going to destroy them by his coming, the sword out of his mouth, which is his word, is just going to destroy him. He, he, he came first, when he first came, to humble himself. He came and washed their feet. And they said, no, Father, no. No, um, no, Master, no. You can't wash mine. We should be washing yours. He said, look, I tell you, if I don't wash you, you won't have a place in the kingdom. It's about humility. It's about putting other people before yourself, caring about others before yourself. That's what our people need to learn how to be humble. Those of you who say you Israel, you're the truth, you don't, we don't have the, our people don't have no humility at all. We think that we're the only ones gonna be in a kingdom. Like he don't care. There are people of other nations that Yah loves and care about. <clears throat> and they will be coming in. I'm wearing myself out, barely can talk now. This is about humility. That's why he rode in. He could have rode in on the horse. He coming in on that white horse when he come back with the host of heavens with him. But when he came here, he came here to show, as to set an example for us. I'm going to show you how to walk. I'm going to show you how to live. I'm going to show you how to submit and yield yourself to the Father. I'm going to come and teach you all things. And then when I leave, I'm... I'm going to send the comforter back. He's going to bring you to all truth. He's going to bring you to remembrance of everything that I taught you. That's what he told his disciples. We don't have to carry this burden. We don't. And ending through Yeshua, through following him and his ways and through consistent prayer and fasting and studying of his word, we continue to learn of him. We become spiritually mature, okay? We become spiritually mature because we come into the full revelation and knowledge of who he is and we remain yoked to him. That's why he says, abide in me and I will abide in you, remaining yoked to him. And so, the strength of the yoke refers to the authority of the one who is nourishing and feeding you and controlling you and governing your walk, whether that be our master Yeshua or the adversary, okay? If, if the authority and the one you remain yoked to is of the true faith in our Messiah, then your strength, meaning the power that your muscles have to perform the work is strong. But if the authority and the one you remain yoked to is not of the true faith and is of the adversary, Satan, then you have no power. Therefore, the ability that your muscles have to perform the work, which is the oath, is lessened, thus being weak. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so the question I have is, who are you yoked to? Who are you in covenant with? Because that's going to tell you the strength of the yoke. Okay, are you, are you sure? You are an ox who knows his master. Because if you don't, this is what you're going to hear. He says, Israel, he says an ox knows his master, but Israel doesn't know. They don't even consider. Do you know who you're yoked to? Who is your authority? Who is your strong authority? Who are you in covenant with? If you don't know us being the inexperienced ox, if we take his yoke, 
and put it on our shoulders and allow him to accept the responsibility and bear it. And we walk as he walked. We follow him. We, we remain yoked to him. We remain in covenant with him. Then we know him. If we don't, you're going to hear, I never knew you. Depart from me. There's a lot of believers. When you read Matthew 7, 21 through 23, this is what he's talking about. These people, these are people who thought they were yoked to him and they never knew him. You're going to find out, many of you on judgment day, you're going to find out that you were yoked, meaning married to someone and covenant with someone that you never knew. It's just like you was drunk with the wine of the whore on your wedding day when you woke up after being in bed with them and they pulled the covers back and you realize who you married. Know who you serve. Pretty, you can come in. Prina. Shout out, y'all, sis. Praise be to y'all. Hallelujah. Um, I have no words. I am just in awe of y'all. Um, this lesson um just blew me um far beyond the waters. Okay. <laughs> um I I just wanna I, I'm gonna quickly say uh one part, but then I just really wanna say what really blew me away. Um I just love, you know, one, how you took us through the paleo um, Hebrew and the understanding of what a yoke versus a yoke is. Yeah. And, and, and giving us that thorough understanding because it led us um, to understanding the, you know, what you said. And it, it really, um, um, I'm, I'm going through my notes because I didn't want to forget and this is what what was so powerful to me is that Yah was was his whole intention was to um remove Israel from the burdens the heavy burdens that they were gifted you know in in Egypt right and give them the gift of life and um lighten their burdens like and just understanding that oh my goodness and how it connects to us as a nation of people and how we did not accept his yoke. We did not. And so he put that heavy iron of yoke upon us to serve the master that we chose because we always was looking for somebody else to serve. We always right. wanted to be king and not, king and and not king. serve. Yeah. And so he said, okay, I'm going to give it to you. Right. And just, I mean, I was just in awe of just how this whole connected to the oath and the covenant that we made and how the, you know, the, the, the oath, the swearing, um, it goes from the, you know, the oath, the swearing and then the yoke and how it all is binding and just understanding that true meaning of what, um, it means come and lay your burdens. You know what I'm saying? Down. And I want to give you rest. Like Yeshua was that yoke. He was that easy burden and just learning that this, the coming in a full revelation of, who Yeshua is and that he is our, our teacher, our, you know, our disciple. And we learning him, you know, he is that way. He is the truth and the life and that no one can come to the father, but through him. And just knowing that if you, if you follow him, you do not have to carry those burdens because he's going to carry it for you. I was just in awe. Um, and and I was just so in awe this whole lesson. I, I I just my mouth was just I couldn't even write fast enough. But just understanding how you connected um the yoke and who you serve, you know whether it's a a power of you know serving Yeshua mm -hmm. or that lesser Satan, whichever one you serve. But just understanding how this lesson connected to. Um, Amuna, faith strengthen. Mm -hmm. I, I was just in just in 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 how um we are to serve and and our uh, others and how we are to 
um, unite in the faith to come into the full knowledge of who Yeshua is. And that's when we become spiritually mature. And that's when we can um, be disciples and then produce um, disciples. I was just in awe this whole lesson, but what really, what really hit me was when you did, hey. Oh, oh my God. Yes. I was just like, oh my goodness. Like, yes. Like when you said really examine it, because I wasn't, you know, I was like, okay, I know she's going to get to it. And just the, just the full revelation of just breath, you know, that, that Yah has that, the breath of life, mm. you know, but we're rejecting it when we are saying, not only I can't breathe, but, but just being a stiff neck as you show through um, the scriptures to uh, 2 Kings 17 and 19 mm -hmm. stood out to me with, you know, that hard neck mm -hmm. and just um, this, I was just in awe of this whole lesson um, from beginning to end. And I truly understand, I hope that the, that the people will understand that, um, you know, how you went from just knowing who the ox is and who the owner is and the strength and, and then leading in up to the the yoke, which is has too many, the power, you know, of the muscle and the strength of, of the ox, and then um the oath. What it means to that we made an oath, that we made an oath with Yah. And, and like you went through Deuter uh, Deuteronomy 29, you know, um, whether we were there or not, mm -hmm. just understanding that we we are still <laughs> accountable. Well, yoke to him. <laughs> we are still accountable and yoked to him. And either you're going to accept the blessings, which is life, <laughs> or you're going to continue in your stiff neckness and, and be unrepentant and continue under the curses and death. I, I mean, I was just in awe of this whole, whole lesson. Told out y'all, praise be to y'all. What stood out to me was the George Floyd. That what stood out to me was the George Floyd, um, what what yoke meant in the context Deuteronomy 28 and 48 about the Yes, 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 yes. Yes, that stood out to me too. Yes, thanks. Yeah, the uh that actually means oppression and uh, I mean yes yes harshness yes mm -hmm. uh, you know what i just um just this whole study of the paleo um hebrew and the parent words just understanding you know how you know two or three more pictures can change the meaning and mm -hmm. I, I was just in awe of all of that just it, it really does the, the 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 hebrew gives better understanding to all of um the scriptures. I mean, you can understand it better, and I, I just truly because then, cause it's because Shema is with obey with it, it's to hear with the intent to uh to to do it to obey to yes. perform, to perform it. And if you ain't performing it, you ain't really heard them. You know what I'm saying? So absolutely, like, absolutely. The iron yoke on their neck until you destroy you. That's the whole thing. So yes. they had the yoke on us. George Floyd had the yoke of iron, of oppression. Yes, yes, he did. On his neck. Mm -hmm. You gonna have it. It was don't think that that was by chance. That was yes. not by chance that what happened with George Floyd, the way that it happened. Where did he yeah. have his knee? Yes, on his neck. The same mm -hmm. neck that we said in 2 Kings 17 40, we stiffened. Yes, yeah, seventeen. Uh, yes, yeah, fourteen. Yes, yeah, seventeen, fourteen. That's the that's the one. I think I said the wrong verse, but yes. I'm gonna but, um, up, um see if anyone has any comments. Yes, I'm, I'm, unmute all. So um, you can unmute yourselves if you have anything to say because I unmuted everyone. So if you have anything to say, you can come in. Hello, beloved. How are y'all doing? Yes, Shalom. How are you? Um, I'm doing well. All is well in the house. Yes, all is well. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> I uh, wanted to say about the neck. 
if we go back and remember how uh, um, uh, got a brain freeze here. No problem. How uh, how um, David killed Goliath? Yes. Yeah. About the neck, and mm -hmm. w one quick way you can cut the enemy off or even cut ourselves off is by stiff neck. It is true. We cut the very life because if our windpipe that's within our throat is not open, the esophagus is not open. We have no breath in us. Right, right, right. So mm -hmm. that's the force in which the enemy used to, to, to shut us up as uh, Yah's people who do not or refuse to follow in his footsteps. And um, it, it's, it's very clear that um, in that demonstration that y'all was saying, not just to me, because I looked at a lot of things that was going on during the time and probably still is, is a controlled tactic, but is our big headed disobedience. Right. We disobey and we shut our mouth from allowing the word of Yah to pop, come out of our spirit and to raise our hands to him who all honor and glory is due to. We, we, we know or hear the word, we harden our hearts towards it, and therefore, the word cannot come out of us because he his word that he give us, it never returned to him void. It right. always have to come out. We can't hold on to the word. If you keep the word, it's a difference. But when it's time for you to let the word go and release it, you're not supposed to keep it. You're supposed to release it like that right. matan right. that you ran with shatan. Yes, yes. The people, are, he said, if my people, my people, my blood-bought people who I pay the price, who I carry this noose around my neck for, right. who I had to remain strong. I'm transfer, transferring them from life to death, right. from carrying this heavy load and carrying this burden. He didn't want us to walk dragged down. He's already paid that price right. and set us free. Mm -hmm. And in order for us yeah. to walk free and lift up our heads and, and praise him and right. give him all the glory, and lift up our hearts, even though our hands may be feeble, our weak knees may be weak. Some of us are, are, are elderly getting into that stage. And even the young people, to demonstrate to the young people as they go on, knowing that Yah is going to take us to a place. But in order to get to that place and get to that transformation in which he, he's trying to take us to, he's leading us to us. He's always the light. He's that cloud of light that took them out of Egypt and brought them into the promised land. So he's always with us, always going with us. And he's so long suffering and so caring yes. and so yes. loving. But there comes a time when the Messiah said, enough is enough. Enough is enough, right. That's why yes. I'm happy. It's not because mm -hmm. I can't do this anymore. It's because right. you won't, you yes. won't listen to me. Right. Yes. Out of darkness into my light. Right. And yet you cease. To obey me, love us though me more than these. Right. I'm transferring you from here to there. And you rather walk in darkness and continue to become enslaved by bondage. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you freedom, free course right. to walk in my life and to lift your hands up and feel the wind under your armpit and to soar up like that eagle I spoke about. Because no more you have to carry that for my yoke is easy and my burden is life he didn't say you are not going to go through something right he didn't he did yes. he mm -hmm. said he tells you but the testing of your time the tribulation that shall come how are you going to overcome and right. overcome yes. the world if right. you don't go yes. through how are you going to be able to defeat the enemy if you're not willing to follow my voice yes come on to me come, just come to me come to me Yes. All you are labeling her me bird and speak to my heart first. Draw you know, near. I'm telling you, he said, draw near. Right. Draw near I'll to me. Bread with you. Near to you. I'll break bread with you. I'll show you. I'll reveal to you the ways of what I'm trying to show you. I review reveal the secret place, the secret things, and the pathway, the ambush in which the enemy set for you. You do not know, but I know, and I will show you. Right. I'm calling you out of this particular pathway, this destructive pathway that you choose. For example, sometimes, you know, when you're encouraging your children, you're 
challenge, saying to him, don't go this way. Don't, ju ju just hear me out. Just hear me. Yes. Just compromise with me. Just, just come to this agreement. You won't go up there. You won't do this. You won't do this. You teach them. And you keep saying this to them. But it's sometimes our stiff neck. Hear what we say to our parents sometimes? Ooh. Let me make my own mistakes. Tell me if that's not the enemy. Yes. You tell me if it's not, it's not stupid. The world will tell you that. The world will tell you they don't make their own mistakes, but that's not the word. Yes. <laughs> it's not the word. It's not the word. But out of them true. come foolishness. Right. Foolishness. Mm -hmm. right. We speak mm -hmm. foolishness. You see? Mm -hmm. And 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 this this list is so awesome, so powerful. I thank y'all for the revelation of the truth of the word and the light of the word, the power of the word, and also for the exaltation of Yeshua, of Yah, the Holy Spirit. Yes. I thank him so much for his servants, the servant of the living God that he's placed in our lives for such a time like this. I give him all the glory and I give him all the praise. Yes. And I think yes. for the demonstration and the connection, because although, look, look, look at the two, two, two uh, uh, ox that was going on. Look at one, what one was laying down, but is Yeshua moving? He's still standing there, beloved. He's still there, waiting for us to get up. Waiting us. He waiting for us to get up. He He's is. waiting on us. He's, He's waiting, waiting on, on us to us. get up. Yes. You know? And to get yeah. empowered, because it does matter. He said, you don't have to stay down. He, he said, when you fall, I'll pick you up. Don't depend on your own strength. I'll pick you up. Just hold, stretch your arm, call unto me. The righteous call the Lord here. He hear and he answer. And he will deliver. So I thank you all for this precious word. And all honor and glory go to his name. Yes. And I thank yes. you for hearing me. And I bless you. I love you all. One day I'll be able, if I don't see you here, and I see you in glory land, I'll be able to hug you and squeeze you and thank you. <laughs> and just, just right. give you, listen, what we call, what we call fellowship love. Right. You yes. I mean? right. Because we're all yes. fruits. All of us are fruits. We demonstrate we have different kind of fruits. And I love all kind of fruits. So I give y'all thanks for all of you and your spirit. Y'all yeah. bless you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. Is there anyone yes. else? Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> Hi. Um, I just had to say, because um, even though I can't get to do too, too much at work because our internet service is horrible, I do see your posts. Um, I knew there was some kind of foolery going on with um, <laughs> this whole <laughs> this whole striking and stuff. I knew that I I completely ignored it to be honest. Right. <laughs> I've just been working and um, thinking about yawn long term goals and not even thinking about it because I just knew it was a distraction for something else. And um, I knew that y'all was going to reveal to you what exactly it was. I was just patiently waiting because I knew it was going to come. And I, I knew that the I can't breathe and all that slogan and stuff, I knew that had to be some type of curse. I just, I, I don't know. I, I knew it, but I couldn't put it into the words that you did. I just knew that y'all was going to reveal everything to you, all the symbolisms everything i just was waiting i said your time gonna come up with it at some point it's gonna happen and here it is right there i was not surprised right i was not surprised or shocked with no. anything i saw today no yeah yeah no i mean when nope. i saw that hey with the arms up because i'm yep. like i was like we've been they, you know they were doing that when mike brown i was like oh my yeah God. Yeah. Had, yeah that was yep. i mean the <laughs> It's just all, oh, and then when the yoke, that's what set it off when y'all showed me that. Like, okay, this yep. is like, yes. look up mm -hmm. yoke in the context when yoke, and when I looked it up and it said oppression, yep. affliction, and the an act of cutting off, like you cut off until he has destroyed you. I mean, yeah, yeah. That that's the ax that that's the yoke right there on the neck right yeah here. exactly mm -hmm. exactly like trying to show our people the synthesis yeah. the dok mm -hmm. the dok level um for those who are in education you know what I'm talking about when I say depth of knowledge dok level yeah mm -hmm. helping you to through everything you learn to finally be able to put it together yep to be able to bring a greater understanding and to solve yeah. This yeah. is the solution 
This is a salute. Mm-hmm. I knew it was something with all that I can't breathe and all this. Yeah. Stop chanting. It's a curse. I can breathe. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yes. Especially, yes. Especially when they um they they said that George Floyd was a, a Mason, a Freemason yeah, as well. I, you know, so there's something else. That he you know. put both of them were um cops together. It's mm-hmm. something about all of this. Yeah. Like, None of the stuff they put Pose, casket, all that stuff. And then most of the dances they do now and all the challenges are old ritual dances, right. you right. know. But Yah is uh, exposing the enemy. Yes. Right now. He's yes. exposing. If you notice, they get kicked off the TV shows now for some of the stuff they say. Yeah. They're pulling up old tweets and firing them yeah. because our 400 years is up. Yeah. It is up. And it's, it, they're slowly but surely being exposed. Yeah. And they can't hide it no more. They can't hide yeah. it no more. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Now they want to, y'all heard, and now they're trying to, in California, to sign a law to, to pass reparations. They're trying to give us reparations. I'm like, yeah, because they know what time it is. Yeah, they do. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's time for us to be judged. Oh, get up some money. <laughs> yes. I, I, yes. I saw um, a video with um, Deborah, the watchman. Yeah. Um, and she did um, something where she showed how um, the the it was a um, white congregation um, was washing the feet of of um, our so called African American people and and um, for uh, pardon to be pardoned and she went into um, forgiveness and what it really meant and how you know she was doing it from the standpoint of um not making a, a, a making sure that we don't get caught up with the with the hype of them asking for forgiveness because right they were doing it with the intentions and she didn't say like blatantly say that but she was just um um making an inference that um it could be uh them making um to be pardoned to you know the, the a covenant make a covenant with us <laughs> So that they won't those those uh curses won't fall upon them because you know the you know the father said that he gonna repay them of and just you know just getting us fall down at your feet and yes kissing us knowing that I am yes 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 I mean this praise y'all yes I mean we have to everybody that's white is not our enemy everybody no. No, no. Because no. our people think that everybody that's of another nation is against us, and they are yes. actually marching, and they actually think they're doing a good thing. They are being supportive because they actually think that is wrong. So everybody out there, and then everybody that's out there is not there because they care. Some of them just want to be on TV, or exactly they're, they're part of the agenda because they were busting in people, like I said here to Detroit. Yes, from others. Yes, from other states. Maryland, Washington D.C. and thirty. Mm-hmm. It was like a hundred of them that they was but that was bust in so they could come and start riots and try to act like he wasn't doing it peacefully when and our mayor was like, Why are you here? They yeah. were, why are y'all here? They were bust in, like, you don't why are you here in Detroit? Why are you bust? Why are you coming? They don't do not fall for the trap. Yeah. Okay, stay awake and vigilant and watchful, but our people gotta get rid of that spirit of hatred. They do. Yes. You know what yes. other nations have done, and yes. you know, he said revenge is his. Our job is not to go around and display that same hatred. We are to have the yes. spirit. We are to walk by the spirit and and show his love and let God deal with them. He's gonna do whatever. Israel fought. Yes, they did. But who was going before them? They didn't fight. Yes, God mm-hmm. did. Let him do. He know what he doing. He doing it now. Yes. He's in our nations now. Mm-hmm. Trust. So let him do what he's doing right now. Let's not get distracted by protesting and marching. Mm-hmm. And we spend all day talking about Satan and everybody who follow him. And nobody is talking about this word. My Our job here is to steer you back and to refocus you on what's really important. And that is walk, learning how to walk right. Because if you don't know how to walk right, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You can know who Esau is. You can be out there marching, process. You can do all of that. But if you are not walking right, you're not gonna see the kingdom. He already said, "Don't, don't um, boast because you Abraham's children." He said, "I can make some Abraham's children come from these rocks, from these stones." <laughs> right? Okay, right. you're gonna be cut off. Many of our brethren are being cut off because they're mm-hmm. walking in unrepentant sin. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, so many of them may be nice. He didn't say be nice. He said yeah. be. being nice is not the requirement to getting into the kingdom. Remember, there was nice people who was pleading. I, I gave to the soup kitchen. I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons. I did all these wonderful things for you. He said, yeah, but I don't know you. You was like, I yes. that didn't mm -hmm. want my own. I don't know you. Mm -hmm. I never knew you. You wasn't joined to me. You might have been in the soup kitchen, but you was joining somebody else in the soup kitchen. You wasn't joining me. So that's and I just want yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Now I was just gonna say we at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, we can't blame no other nation of people right. for right. our plight. Right. We chose slavery, point blank period. Right. We stepped away from the covenant. And we 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 said we don't want your yoke. Right. That was our our curse. Right. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, y'all use them as a whooping tool, um, um, to get us to repent and to, to bring us back to redeem us back. Some of us have came forth and repented, and some are still out there stiff necked like. They were in the wilderness and they all died in the wilderness. Right. They never so, made it out. And they knew they were right. in the while they and, were all with all the bones right. dead in that wilderness. And he told Ezekiel, look at these bones. He said, Can these bones live? Prophesy to these bones. Yes. What are you doing right now by teaching you this teaching is bring forth yes. prophesying to you. Giving you yes. so that you can live. Yes. So don't have a yoke. So the last thing I want to say, if there's anybody else that have anything to say, come on forth now for everyone to peace. You gonna have a yoke on your neck. Just know that, mm -hmm. one way or another. And I just want to say before we you close, um, Shatan, that we we have to come and, and unite and, and and not uniting with the ways of the world, but walking after the, like how Yeshua did with humility. And it begins with our one repentance, and we have to forgive. We we have to forgive so that our sins um can be forgiven. Right. And, and 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 if we can't choose to do that, I mean, how how else are we gonna walk in the ways of Yah if we do not humble ourselves? Right. Right. That's all I have to say. Okay, so. <laughs> Oh, someone else has something to say? Yeah, yes. This, this is yeah. Um, I just want to tell you the lesson. Really, it really was very meaningful. It it meant a lot. You know me. I don't like talking because I talk <laughs> like you. I talk with a purpose, and I'm talking all the time yeah. other places. So I'm not very um, big on talking. But what I did get is that that forgiveness piece as well. Is very key. When I was in Pontiac School District, I met a Caucasian lady that, that she saw it. She said, we, we got to repent. Things are coming our way. We got to get ourselves together. She was first person of, you know, of, you know, that was not black, that I truly felt the spirit of Yah coming from her. When I was at Pontiac, she was one of the social workers and she said, we all gonna be judged and we gotta get it together. We gotta repent, all this hatred, we gotta stop. And it, what Yah let me see at that point was, I was one of those people, I don't, I don't care, I've never cared for white people because of things that were done to me as a child going to Georgia to okay. see my grandparents. Okay. You know, the, the name calling, the terror, yeah. stuff like that, when I would go down south. That's why I, I do not like the south at this point in my life. I've never liked it. Yeah. However, what you said is key. Yah has given me a heart of humbleness, and I have been praying for my enemies diligently since the pandemic started. Right. My my neighbors right. are all white. They're so disrespectful. They they do a lot of disrespectful things. They park in front of my driveway and I can barely get out. They let their kids play all in my yard, in my driveway, all behind my house. And I've told them, you know, that it's not safe. Can you talk to your yeah. children about that? They still do it. But you know what Yah told me? He said, you pray for your enemies. 
you pray for them and you forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And that's what I've been doing. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. what else you said brought to my mind Acts, Acts 7 and 51, where it says, you men who are stiff necked and uncircumcised in your heart, and ears are always resisting the Holy Ghost. Yes. <laughs> you are doing just as your fathers did. And that hit me when you were talking, when you were laying out the teaching, that that convicted me. I can hear this. It's like you are doing just as your fathers. And so I've had to repent for a lot of things over the past weeks. But a lot of it is what you we were talking about, not hating another group of people because of what my experience has been with them not what my forefathers experience was with them what my experience has been with them so yeah. i'm grateful for the lesson and i am going to also pass this lesson on to the social worker that i met in pontiac because y'all let me see she has a he she has his spirit yes and i'm gonna pass it on to her yeah, I mean, our people, um, this is a lesson that need to be passed on to everybody. I, I want to get it in as many pastors' hands because it's really key to what's going on right now. Yes. I mm -hmm. mean, the whole thing, like, that y'all kept just revealing and revealing about the yoke, and it's like that image of him on his neck is the same thing as a burden and he said it's yeah. a fiction. it's oppression mm -hmm. until you destroy the axe to cut you off. Like, it wasn't a coincidence that that's where his and, knee went. Yeah, yeah. How he was killed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, was a, there was a revealing and a revelation in it for our people. And y'all used me in this teaching to bring it out. And because I didn't even know what I was even going to do to tell you the truth. And, 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 and our people need to repent. And it's just, that's yes. it. Yes. That's it. Nothing else. So. Okay, so uh, I pray now I will have you lead us out. Thank you, everybody, uh, for sharing. Yes. Okay, so I'm reading from First Chronicles 29, verses 10 through 13, and verse 18. And David and David blessed Yah before the eyes of all the congregation. And David said, "Blessed are you, O Yah, our mighty one of Israel, our Father forever and ever." To you, O Yah, be the greatness and the power and the high esteem and the victory and the majesty. For all in the heavens and the earth belongs to you. O Yah, yours is the kingdom, and you lift up yourself to all as head. And the riches and the honor come before you, and you rule over all. And in your hand is power and might. And it is, and it is in your hand to make great and to give strength to all. And now, our mighty one, we give thanks to you and give praise to your high esteemed name. O oh, Yah, almighty one of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our fathers, keep this for the intent of the thoughts of the heart of your people and prepare their heart toward you in Yeshua's name. So be it. So prepare. We need to begin to prepare. Yes. I mean, I'm never going to look at uh, my my yoke is easy and burden is light ever again. The same yes, way. the same way. No. He never no. hears him like he's not talking about the egg yoke. He's talking about a different kind of yoke. And um, our people, I pray that you you got understanding out of this teaching. Um, yes. Please, if you have not liked and subscribed to the channel, please do so and share this teaching with everyone you know. And um, may y'all bless and keep you. Um, um, just don't know. Yeah. Bless and keep you throughout the rest of the day. So we're going to have that in here. Um, Shabbat shalom. And if you have any questions, um, yah at yahoo.com um, is where you can email us. Um, again, we're going to have the uh, online course. So depending on, we're going to see how many people we get over the next two weeks. Going to keep. Um, promoting it and see who is interested in learning about how to walk in y'all, learning how to study, okay? And so, Shabbat Shalom.
Bow down to Yahuwah 